somebody to be like, do it. Fuck this. Do it. Do it. With that full backing of counsel. Well, hang on. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, hang not on. really, because I've mentioned it to Nikki before. She's like, uh, sorry, you hate me. No, no. Why? That's a horrible one. That's yeah, like. Yeah, me too. For another day. And like I say, I okay, guess that all your... some staff don't get along with. Do you mean uh, uh, this isn't. And over on the left. Yeah, like, this, this is like a little, not, this not, small, small okay. petty, like. I walked by the so and so and said good morning this morning, and they just looked at me and didn't say good morning back, and then they also my entire day, so now I'm on sick leave. Yeah. It's stuff like that. But I already had Alex. We got this to do that week, so yeah. You know. Like it's not even. Like, get back. But it's like a million episodes of this. Yeah, yeah. Really. Like, like I popped into so and so in public, and I tried to introduce my family to them, and they just said hello and just kept walking, and then I felt bad, and then I didn't want to go to work because. Like I was just really stressed about it, and then maybe you're a little too um, sensitive. It's, it's everyone. It's everyone. Like all the stuff up there. Like I think all the costs are different. All right, can we start recording? Yes, yeah, so no, like... Oh, trying to walk Conservation theory, so yeah. No, no, you're okay. No. <laughs> somebody, somebody should call him our representative. <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> it's it's to Brian Walker from her other. <laughs> Are we good, Nick? Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Corporate Services. Um, call to order. Moved by Mary, seconded by Jason. That the Corporation Service Committee be opened at 7.05. All in favor? Carry. Uh, and disclosure of pecuniary interests. Seeing none. Uh, moved by Jason, second by Mary, that the Agenda for the Corporation Service Committee meeting for April 11th, 2024, be approved as circulated. All in favor? Agree. Um, moved by Mary, second by Jason, that the minutes for the Corporation Service Committee meeting held March 5th, 2024, be adopted as circulated. All in favor? Here. No presentation and delegation. Staff report. Okay, I'm going to start. <laughs> uh, so the first one is uh, the first draft of the 2024 operating budget. And then after that, we'll have a discussion about the capital, which will kind of tie into um, I need to speak on the agenda. So if we start with the big paper, um, the first few pages are um, revenue, but you'll see. So I know it's a lot of papers and there's a lot of detail on the pages. Uh, so what I've done is taken every account that we have and this is what we have presented. And I want to get into the weeds to go line by line. But if we can, uh, and I have a, a thing of the overall where the increases are and where things have changed. On here, what I've done is the first column um, is N, it says um, 2022. Those were the actuals of 2022. And then we have the actuals of 2023, unaudited. Um, and then we have the averages. And what I've done for these averages, they are a five-year average. So I've put all of the data from 2019 to 2023 in this um, spreadsheet. I've just hidden some columns so I could actually get it on one piece of paper. So those averages are typically what the five-year average has been for that account. And then there's the 2023 budget. The S is the variance to the actual from the 2023. And T is the variance from the budget of 23 to the budget of 24. And then U is the budget for 2024. On the other side of that, there's a little bit of explanations. Um, and then under W, that's where I start. I have started to put um, a budget going forward for the next five years as well. So where we know there are planned changes and where there's planned increases, we're put, I'm trying to put them in so that we can try um, to stabilize our increases or at least be more aware of them. Um, 
the plan. Uh, as I said, the first few pages are the reviews. Um, basically, the highlight on this one is line, um, and up the side, you'll see there's lines on here. So line 2202. Um, I have pulled Turkey quit taking the $75,000 every year out of the reserves. So this is where that transfer from reserves for the working capital for the $75,000, yeah. I have removed it. Okay. So if we have, you know, if we want to look at, you know, decreasing the, the rate or the levy increase or anything, we can come back to that. Mm -hmm. um, line 213 is uh, the efficiencies grant that we have. There is still some money in there. This 52,000 is for our town suite um, software that we will finish paying for in 2024. So there's an expense later on for Channel Suite. This is just a review to cover that expense. Uh, the Ontario Municipal Partnership Fund, that's the amount that we get from the province for, from, uh, mm -hmm. from when there was a big transfer up and down of services. And then our general taxes. Um, let's see. I think overall the difference um, in revenue is uh, it's like less than $1,000. Um, from one year to, from last year to this year, the highlight would be that it um under medical centers because we have a second doctor allocation, we do get additional funds. Um, so that would be line two sixty nine. So there's a substantial increase in there. Um, next year, you'll see in the line um, under column W is uh, the full year of two doctors, and that will help offset some of the costs. So I'll go over the medical center um, budget in greater detail, but just to highlight that one. Yes. And then I think it is... Um, on page five, you'll also see in planning and development, there are some increases under line 333. Uh, a lot of the expenses that we have in the planning budget as well, uh, so like for the consulting, a lot of those are fee for service. So if we have a pre-consult uh, pre with the developer, they pay for it, and then that offsets the cost that we have for our planner to be on site to do that. Are we budgeted the full amount of that? Yes. I yes. have one question going back to uh, medical center. Okay. So farmers who rent out income, how come there's nothing? No, uh, so the agreement is that he only pays the 50% of the heat in the hydro or the, the furnace oil. So he doesn't, um, he ha that's his incentive for being a pharmacy. Like there is no monthly rent. Oh. So there was no heat or going forward? I think it's something that we can look at in 2025. I think that there is a contract. I'm saying I think because I don't know if the date was 25 or 26, um, but there for the contract for us to renew. But you're not seeing any revenue? Yeah, I'm not seeing right. any revenue. Uh, under the medical center. Oh, I'm just being... There's... Oh, for a pharmacy. Okay. So the rental income is nothing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. For um, the fire department, just so that I'm aware, can we go line by line for me? Then we know what that that uh, what number two, page two, and it's like 249 for 250 plus. Yeah. Okay. So 259 is. Um, if there's an accident on the highway, we can recoup those costs. So in 2023, the fire chief did get signed up and now Bonfield is registered on that platform so that we can invoice from these units of income highways. We're invoicing basically for the mass ones. That's what we're going to be For MTO. Yes. Yeah. What about hydro? Do we do that when they're down power lines and stuff? I'm not aware of what we do for hydro. Last. Then we bill it. Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. I know there will be a report coming um, regarding fire monkey because they um, the fire department wants to do we'll be doing a report on how to recoup the cost when they do do a fire response. So that report will come later in June. So two forty nine is like you two fifty is the um, ten to post rental income. What about uh, any contracts that we enter into that? But we are we are scheduled to have them, right? A contract for for fire services for uh, any services that they provide oh. that is above and beyond, right? Yeah. So, so for inspections, there's fees for inspection. And yeah. So typically, we just put that in two fifty two. There is um. So we don't know that at all. Yeah, but I did put a thousand dollars somewhere for the building for the fire permits for this year. Yeah, <laughs> that's in here. So it might be on the individual, the the department budget, but it's not in here. But and two fifty one fire calls. Yes, so we don't typically have many um from mm -hmm. that. Yeah. That's what the, the department wants to come forward with, so that when we have a fire call, they can recoup those costs. We have to enter into an agreement and work with a third party company and they help get insurance coverage on those. So like private residence mm -hmm. or like a field or whatever. Yes. We would invoice back or something. Yes. So there's 2,400 just in average, but I don't see anything mm -hmm. in many years. And that was from 2019. So there is, there's like we have not had that relationship, that partnership, that opportunity. So that's why they want to bring it back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I guess other townships have some sort of way of recouping for calls, especially when it's the residents' mm -hmm. fault. Yeah, like I don't know, a field, we'll say, mm -hmm. things like that. And I think there, there's fines and companies that you could do. You could also do it through the, the uh, administrative penalty program. So that when we do implement that form of bylaw enforcement, then we can levy penalties. And collect sometimes that way. But there's nothing in place now. It's not. Okay. What, what is W on W? 2025. Yeah. Five years from now. Um, maybe if it's so close to page four, one thing I can explain is will come up under equipment rentals. Um, line 302, there's a, a section, a part in there for contaminated soils. Mm -hmm. So to date, we have collected well above this amount, mm -hmm. but we do want to use it for capital. So I did not put it in this file, in this section of the operating. Mm -hmm. I want to say bylaw, but it's budget. Get the approximate amount. Yeah. We have been um renting uh bulldozer to move the material that's been brought in. So there's still ten thousand revenue in there to offset those costs. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Is it because they're just dumping anywhere in there? Or are we asking them to get into that? It's, very, it's, yeah. it's just a large amount of, yeah. larger than what we were told to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, so, so they just make it more cheap. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Payne. But we are, like, we are recuperating our costs. So. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. So, page five. We start on expenses. So the first. Um, the, the bottom of the first section is on general government council expenses. Um, I, you will see that the budget is decreased based generally on the travel expenses and the registrations for the conferences. You guys are almost veterans now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I think the 375, um, that's where the salaries are. Um, understanding that last year we were not um, at full 
staff and this year we are plus the increase that is planned with the collection so I'm just watch them then um, and that includes all the increases that happen it, like it's our cost so it includes the benefits like the benefits it includes EI it includes all of the work set uh, and then that's the 49,000. Yeah, the difference between the 49 yeah. Uh, we almost doubled in staffing in three years. Yes. Somewhere it went, yes. <laughs> so, were we that short staffed? Or we... well, well, during COVID and when, um, when staff retired, there was only one person in the office and one person working at home. So it was there's not as many people in the office and right. and the admin staff is not required. The front counter staff. So maybe it's just a change of years. Yes, very. Right. As was 21. Yeah. yeah. So um, the next line we'll look at is 386. So this is the capital levy that goes into the operating budget. Um, so from the capital budget, we traditionally every year take a portion of that and put it in levy. It's usually around $130,000. That's what's set in the budget. Um, this year I have increased it by $15,000 to $145,000. So this is another area that we can go back to $130,000. What's the rationale for the increase? The large capital purchases come. And that just... You have to put that through the operating budget? Yeah, this is a way to fund it. This is the operating budget funding the portion of the capital. This is the only section where the operating funds the capital. Okay. What, what's the point of putting it in the operating as opposed to keeping it in the capital if it's for a capital purchase? It's not very good. So a cap, in the capital budget, everything is funded by another fund. So yeah, gas tax or OCIF or a grant. <laughs> There are certain projects that are not funded by a grant, and then that comes right. through the okay. capital. But this, this again, yeah. So that's just another way that we could shave off half a percent. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But everything yeah. 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 Um, in three ninety one, there is an additional twelve thousand for a website, a new website. And we have streamlined the computer IT, the computer supplies, the computer email software, the website. We've well, continuously yeah, looked at that. Because that, I feel, mm -hmm. it still could be more efficient. Yes. So I do have um, a summary, which I'm sorry I don't have with you right now. But there is a summary. So in all of the different accounts, there is roughly... $40,000 that we spend a year just in software subscriptions. Mm -hmm. So, but right now we're paying for Town Suite and we're paying for Baker. That will decrease once we do that. Well, 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 and why are we paying for Baker when Town Suite's not up and functioning? So we have to pay for Baker so that we can still have a system. But isn't Town Suite? Town Suite did reduce. They gave us all of our fees back from 2023. So they, re they took it off from 2024. So it's uh, and do we retain a legacy system or is everything uh, is there a data dump into town suite? There's a data dump, but we would like to run parallel for six to twelve months. And do we'll we keep depend Baker on as time. our legacy or that information will be in town suite? Okay. Everything's transferred into there. So when you put all the we'll go back to what Don was saying, when you put all the this computer stuff all together, there's Obviously, we're now that we see it all lumped together, easy. we can use. Is, yes. it, is it efficient enough? I didn't see much that we could cut. It's like agenda notes, it's the town suite, it's Baker, um, it's Adobe. Um, there's not much that can be cut. The, there's a, a program that we pay for, the Citizen Alert, that's $1,600 a year, and it's for the emergency system that we have. We use it now just to get more use and to generate more attention to it. Um, but that's 1600. Um, so yeah, it's another piece that we definitely have to look at. Memberships are closer to $10,000, like AMO is $1,600. We belong to the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. You know, that's like $600. So those expenses, we'll have to look at whether what memberships we want to stay in. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I think in 397, you'll see that we've really, um, we have looked at all of our cell phones and iPads. So we started that process and we've been working with the, uh, with Bell and Rogers, to be able to streamline those better. Okay. Okay, it's 400. Um, you'll see in 400, our insurance has gone up 13,750. That's just in the general government. You'll see the same legacy in every department. But insurance, but we've already said so that. Bank charges. Line. Uh, 402. Okay. So what's the breakdown of that? Because I think that we were looking at, um, like, what does it cost for me to pay my taxes by visa? What does it cost for um, electronic transfers? So uh, have we done an analysis on that? I have not. I will. Okay, and then yeah. yes, can, because how, so again, I pay my taxes monthly by visa. Mm -hmm. There is, visa charges you. Yes. They're like there's, so who eats that cost? Like is so, the township eating that cost? Yes, right now it's the township. So why wouldn't I be paying that as a taxpayer if I choose to this pay to by visa? Year, this is the first year that you're allowed to do that. So no, it's not. No. Yeah, no, as a company. You know, no. companies couldn't charge a surplus legally, oh, okay. charge a surplus oh. for credit cards until this year. Okay. And now it's for right, but I'm paying my taxes this way, right? Like I'm right. not buying uh I'm not I'm not buying a toaster from Amazon. I'm paying my taxes. So it shouldn't cost the municipality for me to pay my taxes. Right. right? But I think prior to this year, I don't think they would have been allowed to do a surplus. Well, there could have been a user fee or something to fee. say that, uh, right? So, your, like, and it should have been, and, that's right. I, I drew this thing that, like, yeah. if you pay on the now, 1.75%. Yeah, I think you it can, can go up to 4%. I mean, okay. we should if you be pay, any of those costs. If you pay through your, um, your visa, right? Yeah, if you pay by credit card, like on yeah, Hydro's website, exactly. the company that it directs you through yeah. carries you 1.75% on top of your bill. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah, because why, again, why would the company want to eat the cost for a convenience yeah. for you? That's number one. Number two is, have we looked at uh, paying um, through our banks? Because if I could set up an account through my bank and pay the township, yeah. is... Right, it, with the exception of, of TD. Right? Exception, <laughs> with the exception of TD and yeah. RBC, but we have learned that TD may, because both of those banks yeah. charge us fees. Yeah. So it's the same principle. Yeah. Why would we pay a fee to collect the okay. data? I think yeah. we have too many pay services. Okay. I think we need to kind of... Or we need to understand, like, I mean, I think it's good to offer options, but if they're not free yeah. options, yeah, right? Free. So if I want the convenience of paying by credit card, I understand that I'm going to pay a fee for it. So that is okay with me. But it, to me, um, sometimes that might be the option of collecting the taxes. And it's, to me, it would be the cost of doing business. But that's, I, that's a I know problem. they yeah. take a, I know they take the visas at the law firm, but they take the visas so that they but can they, get the payment. But they probably hike their prices well, up they, a little bit. They pay the law firm pays their portion and the client pays their portion. They have to pay to use the visa, uh, especially on a money payment. Right. And then the law firm is charged four percent for each bill that's paid with the law firm. And so it's kind of, well, I don't want to take the visa, but maybe we're not getting the money. Mm -hmm. So the, to me... I think we need to understand how much it's costing. Though, If it's costing us, you know, $200 a year or something uh, minuscule or nominal, yeah. But if it's costing us, a because that means that everybody else you is pay paying for my convenience to use Visa. Because right? I, like I paid, yeah, because yeah, I paid no. my taxes. Why am I helping? And that's you? right. Can you pay cash or use credit <laughs> check or something that doesn't cost anybody anything. Right. Um, right. So maybe I should find myself here on the first day. <laughs> Check, right? Yeah. So I made so, a note that a for a breakdown on that. Yeah. So I mean, we need some analysis on Yeah. It. The only challenge is if the bank is charging. So I think I, mine's just out of bounds. It comes out of my bank, not like the 
It's pre, yeah, pre operation payment. Does that cost from a bank? Or is, what did you just say? Yeah. No, we should. Those don't. Those but don't. Okay. do I have that option with TD? Yes. Okay. Oh, usually if it comes out of say you're checking your savings account, there's no fee associated. But if it's coming off a credit card, yeah, then yeah. there's a fee associated. Yeah, because yeah, if you put it as a payee, yeah, it doesn't cost. Like if you put it through, but I told the TV, we're not a payee end of the TV. Yeah, system. we did talk about that in the last month about getting on. Okay. Yeah, because okay. yeah, I mean I would do that. Okay. And for government funds. So when you go to the bank and pay your, uh, if you're taking your taxes at the bank, there's no cost. No. Can you pay your taxes at the bank? I, yeah. Can you pay your taxes at the bank? I mean, they are you the bank. If you bring in your bank, you, 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 yeah. you should be able to pay it. Even the TD bank? You should be able to pay it. No, no, I've been there since I was 16 years old. <laughs> Seems very restrictive. Yeah. No. Oh, no. Yeah, okay. Great. Uh, grants and donations under 403. Uh, we do have a, with the new policy. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll bring it up the next council meeting as well. But we had four applicants. Only one put a dollar amount in. So and we reached out twice to say, you know, what what are you looking for? But you're just whether it's in kind or a cash donation. Mm -hmm. We do have one from the church for two hundred dollars, well within our budget. So I have told them that would be approved. Okay. Sorry. And is this the advertising? Remember, we've had the conversations. I, I don't think this family should be in the business of giving our donations. I think if we get value back for it, there's not too much value. Right. I haven't hired this, but I'm not looking. But like, there should be something. Yeah. So the trip just for the ticket does have the township on that. Yeah. And then don't we give to yeah. others? So this includes the Halloween thingy, right? Okay. Um, they have not seen. They'll probably submit later, but we did send out, just so everyone knows, we did send out the policy when it first got adopted with the um, application. I believe that was in December, and then we extended the deadline because the policy was supposed to be February 15th. Um, it was passed late, like uh, okay. later. So then we sent the letters out. Yeah. They asked if they could have more time. We extended it. So right. So we've got this 2500 in anticipation. Yes. That. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So then uh, what we have now is what we paid. Until next year, is that or do we or well, do we look at what we have left in the budget? That'll be a council decision. How come our integrity commissioner is so low? Because Steve's on our uh, sound, so <laughs> he's already used that <laughs> <laughs> just for fun. I know, it's just for fun. Yeah. So, so no, <laughs> and and we have used it. So the integrity commission report that was done in 2023, the bill was received in 2024. Uh, so that includes the 2024, like the 2023. And we didn't set up the liability. Paid. So there's an additional five thousand. So, but there was no liability set up for 2023. There, but there was a budget of five thousand, but we didn't transfer that over. Okay, it'll on. it'll be in the surplus. Sure, it's nothing. But when I look at W at the very top on line one, why is it a why is it a number? Two thousand. It's Excel. Twenty five. Yeah, because it's Excel. It's, it's not that everything's moved up there. Oh, no, it's just a picture. It is supposed to. It's not supposed to be a dollar amount, but when I put it in the column, to be dollar. No, no, it's fine. I just want to make sure, like we weren't like looking at numbers that are actually possible to be up there. <laughs> yeah, it's intended to be forty three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, four oh five legal. Um, there's a substantial increase in that, and that is for the collector. Mm -hmm. No, because. Council had expressed that we're going to uh, yes. to challenge. Yeah. Uh, Four oh three consultants have um, been reduced drastically. Um, Four oh seven. Four oh seven. Last year we did have that grant that we didn't use. Um, there's another deadline in this <laughs> July, and there'll be a piece of financial strategy that needs to be in there. So we do need another set of eyes on that to make sure that that looks good. So I earmarked some funds for that, but I don't know what the cost would be. I hope to use, uh, we work with KPMG um, under the asset management program. So I'm hoping that they will review it. Um, did we increase education and training? 
good. That's good. Um, yeah, so all between 413 and 415, the, I believe the dollar amount stays the same, but it's redistributed because we do have two staff who are taking the yeah. um, municipal administration program. So that covers their fees. Um, and then there's still opportunity for registration for conferences and, yeah, and I, other one-off trainings. I, I, and I think because we have new staff, we really want to train them up. So now yes. this is the time. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. uh, the next line was election costs. So we are just putting money into a reserve to uh, run there. I think that would be it. Four nineteen is the one where the membership and um, software subscriptions. Yeah. That's where a bulk of them are. Um, so we will have to uh, perhaps we'll give you a list at the uh, council meeting. We can start going through. Yeah. Of course, memberships come due between January and March, so it'll be for twenty twenty five. But we can still make that decision. Uh, and then four twenty seven. Um, there is funds set up um, to redo the council where council sits. Your your council table. I believe that that has been in the budget for some time. Or no, not in the budget, but been talked about. So that's another thing. So that's, that to me is a nice to have, right? Because yeah. it's fine the way it is. Mm -hmm. If that means the 1%, then. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. This is the wish list. Yeah. <laughs> we did spring for next year. Yeah. Um, you'll see in the fire department, line four thirty four. Oh, yeah. Um, so we have had reports and we know that the SC, S, yeah, SCBA mm -hmm. needs to be renewed and the standard changes in 2024. So we do need to move forward. So the fire chief will have a report, but he's recommending that we don't replace the entire system this year. Um, and But we still need to save. It's like $120,000 yeah. yeah. project. Yeah. 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 So if we can save half of that this year and then next year, yeah. this year um, we are short on the tanks, but um, they found some resources within their network that can help us get some some new yeah. tanks we that, that, that will get us through. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go here. Um, yeah, that has to do with I have it on my line. Um, four sixty two. Mm -hmm. Sixty two. Yeah, 462. Oh, no, four. I wrote 462, but it is actually 437. <laughs> so close. <laughs> yeah, not even close. Yeah. Not even the same numbers. <laughs> the fourth, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so Omrus is uh, coming out with a, uh, it started, you'll see in here that it started in 2023. We don't have our, um, our state meet yet that they've asked us to fill out for the volunteer firefighters. Um, so this may be premature, but in anticipation that it may happen. And then we still have to send letters to each of the firefighters and ask them if they want to be part of Is the Is this office. mandatory? Uh, uh, it's a pilot project right now, but it will likely be mandatory. And who determines this? Yeah, like did, so, so do we not, do we have an option to opt in? So, I want to say no. Um, so what I know is, and, and it's still evolving. So we're still learning all the time on this. Um, so there was a fire chief's meeting in when we were at Rome, there was a fire chief meeting and they yeah. did talk about this. So um, some colleagues have come back to tell, to tell me that they are really pushing for this. Always is the final decision. Who's they? The fire? The fire chief. The fire chief association. Okay. Yes. Um, and then Omer's makes the final decision. It's their board. Amo has a rep for the municipal sector on that on the Omer's board, um, but that's how you would challenge it through. But Omer's is going to say yes. Yes, it's money for them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a pretty big decision for the fire chiefs to be making. Like, 
protecting there. So it would be um, Omer's. And I mean, understand that. I mean, I think in here there's like questions that we have to ask um, yeah. on page three. You know, how are the positions described and agreed to? How is the person paid? So taxable wages, um, fixed payments at regular intervals. Well, we only have that for the fire chief and the deputy chief, not all the fire chiefs. So they, you know, may perhaps those two are the only ones that qualify. Right. Right. I could see that. Right? Me too. Right? Me too. Okay. The, the other ones are the point system. It's not a regular paycheck. It's nothing. So they likely won't. Yeah. But there's still a process that we have to go through before that can be determined. Because this is... Uh... <clears throat> This is a cost for the municipality. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So when you said you're, we have to send letters out to the fire fighters? Yeah. So once I get the paperwork from OMERS, we'll complete it as we, as necessary and go through the, the questions. But it might just be the two that might just be the two. Oh, yeah. Great. But yes. it could be all of them and they have to decide whether they're in or out. Yeah, right? they opt in or out. As a group, not individual? No, individually. Hmm. individually. Yeah, because they pay two, right? Yes. Yeah, so individually they could opt in or out. So still evolving, but definitely something that's going to impact us. Okay. And so we have budgeted for it now. Yes. I think in total the increase is like seventy two hundred dollars. Yeah. Four sixty oh, no, let me figure this out because maybe it's not four sixty two. You need to write the wrong number down. Driver medical? No, nope, not that one. There's one now for, oh, um, it's 440. So the office clerk wages used to go under public works. So now they are not in public works and they're now attributed to the fire budget. Okay. It's, a, it, it's a change, but so it's reflected. This is the entire, uh, the entire fire clerk's salary? Yeah, she only went, it's hours a week. Yeah, it's we're up to 10 hours a week now. Mm -hmm. And there is up still here. some in the fire or in the public works for the portion that she's working in public works? Yes. Yeah. You just split the salary between yeah. the lines that she's actually working. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it's also shows true cost, which is better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 446. I've left the, you'll see. Most of the average of the computer supplies and all the computer support are pretty minimal. I still left amounts in there because they've not had a new computer in several years. So they're going to need a computer. The fire department or? The yeah, the fire department. So, do you want to make sure that that's in there? Um, the insurance um, decreased. I have no idea why my numbers are. Oh. I deleted a whole bunch of lines oh. <laughs> so that they would fit. <laughs> but I wrote my notes before I did that. Um, so the insurance is decreased. We used to have a rider on our insurance um, for firefighters so that they they had the option again of signing up. And then we would have they we would insure them again um, if they got hurt so that they'd be covered from doing fire department business, but on their personal time mm -hmm. so that we would have um, none of them were interested. We haven't had anyone on the rider in a number of years, so we just canceled that insurance oh, okay. if there's no if there's no interest in it. Yeah. yeah. Go down. The bunker gear is from last year. Um that's line 465. So uh, there will be the 15 out of reserve. No, because that's on the revenue side. Which line is it? Was that what we uh, was that what we had looked for? Wasn't it more than that? Well, no, it was more the expense change, the cost change. Yeah, so from four, one, three, yeah, yeah, to seven, seven. 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 Yeah. yeah, okay. So the fire chief has told me that they have all brand new helmets, so we don't have to get a complete oh. bunker suit. So it. do we know the actual cost of these suits now? No, no we're not going to tend to do that. We haven't we haven't looked into the price, but they all have new helmets. And um, most have still have good boots. Those so jackets and the pants that we need to get. Okay. I'll follow up with the fire chief if he knows the cost per suit. We're meeting Monday. Yes. 
It could be three, it could be seven, but no. I think it depends on how much of the ensemble you buy. Yeah. Um, there's so a little bit of money in the buildings for um, station two. Um, I think everything else has stayed pretty much the same, um, with the exception that Fire Station One, they would really like to have better internet so we can see about getting Starlink in there. So up on uh, somewhere in the internet, and I've added mm -hmm. um, $800 in there so we could purchase Starlink and then have more. Now, would that have to be like a residential? Is it commercial? Would that be residential? Yeah. You could probably do that. Depends on how many connections. I mean, they're not there all day long. No. Yeah. What? Um, <laughs> what? Do the the internet, like the training, training. Yeah. and access all the the monthly annual reports that they have to do. That's very in the uh, line four eighty eight. Does that two thousand dollars include one hundred dollars to paint the door of station two, <laughs> so it doesn't look dilapidated? Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Jake, I'm listening to you. I got your back. <laughs> yeah, good job. <laughs> it's like, like a band of building. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, emergency management. There is a um a flat knife. Um and then well, I don't think there's much information. Sorry, I'm skipping ahead, but there's not much difference in the um vehicles um, and the equipment for the fire department. Either. Do we have an agreement with Red Cross? Uh, so it gets budgeted every year. Yeah. And yes, the intent is to get one in 2024. Where is the closest Red Cross? Perfect. Gotcha. No. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think there you'll see in 524. And that is the last week that was with the fire section in your extra. So there is a, a five-year plan um, that they would to help implement our emergency management plan. Um, oh, what, sorry, what number is that? Five. Uh, yeah. And then there's the sheet that was with the fire owners. So does this include training though? Or for emergency management? Yeah. Well, that's in the, the rest of the agenda. So this one here is just for some of the capital purchases that money. Do we have the emergency management training for fire, like IMS or them or any that's of that? That's in the fire training. It is. Okay. Yeah. Does the emergency center not have a backup or have a generator? I believe they do. No. So if there was a big discussion and we don't believe they do. Yeah, we should know this. Is that yes. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah, and who's buying generating? I think that we'd have to enter some mm -hmm. to, some discussions in the price, but it's it's identified as we should have a generator at the evacuation zone. Now, whether there's funding, whether we fund raise for it. Or... Is yeah, the... Sorry. No, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was say. I mean, to me, that should be part of the. We rent the bill. We rent the yeah, building. They should. Right. <laughs> Well, and not just be we would for rent would probably work when we they'd amortize it over there yeah. <laughs> the lifespan and then continue to charge the rest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we used the emergency building once for three days. They cooked all the meals in there and I can't remember not having power on the building. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Uh and this eighty thousand dollar hit in twenty twenty five. Did I see the budget that we're putting some away now? Like, what what was it earlier? Yeah, so a 20 different no. generator. Is there a generator in here? I don't think they have a generator. What are oh, we okay? Sorry, there's SCBA. Yeah. Okay. So in 2024, the radio systems um for upgrades because the systems um here in the office, if this is the EOC, we don't have a radio here to um to talk to the incident command. There's no radio in, in here. So we would like one to update part public works and fire. So we'll have that radio in here. So where is where does the 
main radio sit in fire station at the fire station? We do have a fire station. We do have one that we can hear, but it doesn't work. So you just have a it's radio? To yeah, that's me too. They're in different places. Your telephone doesn't work. And that's why, uh, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it'll be joined by a channel, and you can have one in here. Okay. It'd be a good time and to then, into that. Yeah. And then you don't have to pay uh, monthly rentals. If you put a, your kind of some your own towers up, then you don't have to pay rental, and you can have this, everything on one one channel but you have one and two that are totally separate so you have to switch one to roads two to fire department okay i'll bring four for them where's your towers well i mean i'm not sure it's well there must what be repeaters around is. yeah here, but there's right? repeaters but you just buy the that channel sold for mm -hmm. us um so you'll see in there there's um this year there's two thousand set aside for the brother Glen fire hall refurbish and retrofit it needs um Needs and response assessment and then provisional based on the needs assessment. So that will fix your door as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and then there's a thousand dollars so that we can do a flood mitigation plan. Uh, we do need the help of the North Bay Metal Conservation Authority to do that. So and we're paying extra for that. Didn't count yeah, that just don't get a lesson on that at one point. Yeah. As a board ring well, down help. Yeah. Yeah, it's there. So I can okay. do it for you. Yeah, it's not part of the of the the thirty. I need a topic or off the back. Yeah. <laughs> the thirty-eight thousand dollars that we pay on a monthly or on a yearly basis that's it, not included. So that's a part. Of, that's only part of what the mitigation plan is going to be, though. So the mitigation plan is still is you know we need to talk to public works and where does it um, flood? How, what are we doing for that? And creating a whole plan that will tell us, you know, when there's more culverts that need to be, if they're bigger, they're higher, and then what that all looks like as a bigger plan for the most problems. Then the next year, they want to do it for the wildfire, and then next year, um, continuity of operation plan. So it's just to set some money aside each year so that we can do... Shouldn't we be doing the coop first before we plan for floods and fires? Because the coop is what's going to drive, right? Mm -hmm. So it's how you're continuing operations, regardless of flood or fire. So yes. should you not be doing the coup first, the continuity of operations? The coup is the continuity of operations. Oh, right. so what, right? it was for 26. Yeah, but so it should come first. Your emergency services. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it should come first. Okay. <laughs> as well as the evacuation. <laughs> 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 this is called, oh, well. or, so, as long as we don't need to evacuate before 2027. <laughs> <we're probably. laughs> exactly. So we should be evacuating and cooping before we fire and flood. But in 2025, we're going to build like a wolves only highway because we have a wild mitigation plan. Yeah. That is the uh, section on that picture. Okay. 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 Um, so that's emergency management building, um, generally the same, but I can't tell you the numbers anymore because they don't line up. Um, but in the salaries, um, so the salaries do, we do um, have a CBO, um, mm -hmm. and we do have, um, we also split their uh, pay between, or, or their pay rate um, between bylaw and building. Okay. So under bylaw, that's under general government. And that's still in those salaries. And then this is the salary component that is just attributed to the building. Again, it speaks to that reserve that we need to have. So we have to have all of our true costs for building in, in line. Um, yeah, and every year it's going to get better and better, better. our information. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, um, so this F SUV is the is the vehicle that we have, right? Yes. Yeah. There was health and safety supplies, and it's generally been at about nine thousand. I put it down to a thousand this time. I'm sure that they'll need boots and stuff. Health and safety in the building department, or in yes. the yeah, in the building. 
Uh, animal, animal control. Um, mm -hmm. the change just went up seventy five dollars, and that is just the five five eight because it goes up three percent. But in twenty twenty five, that this may all change based on what report will yeah. come back yeah. if we hire a, a a person instead. Yeah, it's a Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, police services is generally the same. Obviously, it's 570 that typically drives the cost of this budget, and that's the OPP contract services. So it did go up $12,000, um, almost $13,000. So now we're at $332,000. That's generally what drives it. The next one, um, 579, is the North Bay Mountain Conservation Levy. Mm -hmm. And I, I skipped over the impact levy as well, but can I back up to police service for yeah. a second? Sorry. So oh, I'm just trying to say something. What's that? Okay. Um so I see it as an increase of fourteen thousand seven hundred and eighty-two. Uh, maybe I just misheard you because I don't think that's what I heard you say. So we're not because our total for this year is expected to be three hundred forty nine thousand eight hundred seventy two that we just pay to the OPP. Well, the yeah, twelve thousand that, that's up here, the contracted services, the contracted services, yeah, and then there's twenty two hundred under five seventy six, and that matches um, that increase to match the revenue um, and the expense for the OPP ride program to occur in the new calling. So you see, last year it was budgeted for forty five hundred, but we actually spent sixty five hundred. So I'm just making it to what our actuals are, and the five year average is generally sixty two hundred. So, and are we triggering when the ride programs are happening? I for the police services board for the ride program. Yeah, yeah. we don't trigger when they're going to be here. No, they just well. Do we not give them a budget and then uh, that says you can do X number of ride programs in our community and pick the times you want? I think they're made aware of any events that sure perhaps they should be there. And we apply for this funding. Yeah, it's yes. always applied. We always apply for it. And then we don't we, we issue checks to the yeah. officers. Yeah. Pay the officers with the funds that we get. The, These are the expenses and then the set of ride programs, I think, too, based on the amount of calls that they get coming off of the highway and off of the lake for drinking and drive. Because like uh, a couple of years ago. It was almost every time I was going to work, they're sitting up corner and they're catching snowmobilers. Mm -hmm. So the more calls the public has, the more they set up ride programs. Sure. And then all the guys that are doing the ride programs are the guys that get brought in, usually from other areas, other dispatches, that are either on the lake on boats during the day, and then they set up ride programs, or they're on the lake doing mm -hmm. snowmobiles. Right. They set up ride programs. But there's the offsetting revenue. Yes. Okay, that's... Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to say when they should be or how often. It was just more of the listen. If we budget five grand, don't do ten thousand dollars to the ride right, program exactly. checks. Like do five thousand dollars worth, but if it's offsetting revenues, I'm fine. Um, and the first meeting for the new regional um, police services board is next Thursday. Yeah, the eighteenth. Yes. So we've kept our budget the same. This will be the inaugural meeting, and we don't know what it means for our budget or for well, operations. It's just two people now, though, right? There's just two people from here that's on oh, it. Yeah. So one community member and one council member. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I did promise. Okay, Mawa. Conservation authority. Um in your package, I also made me copies of all of the levels. Over here, you did? Yep. So let's explain their budget. Yeah. And so and then it explains on the second page, um, it does put in what the levies are. Oh, perhaps I'll have two pages of page two, so maybe someone doesn't have page two <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> Um, but you'll see bond below, the top line, 
Um, our total operating and capital budgets are the 32,000. I did not put in the funds for the Smee Hill. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and we kind of have no choice to pay this. Right. Yeah. 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 Unless Steve gets us out. Ponies up, then. Uh... Did you say you put a page with all of the levies or just this one? You know, all of the, the next one. Is oh, they're all the... originally. There's not. Yeah. A... Oh, it's yeah. a nice note to me, Steve, to say that uh, it's sincerely appreciated for your continued participation mm -hmm. in collaborative, strong governance structure oh. that guides. Yeah, everything is worth it. Changing times. <laughs> Thank you for your service. So we we're not paying for the skating. No, that's the decision that that's just so That's just me. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Donna doesn't want to pay it. No. I do not. <laughs> I would wonder where the people where our people would ski if they wouldn't ski up there. That's a lot of them. Oh yeah, I'm by lot. Do we know if any of our, I mean, I think this could be something that we want to hear from the public, right? Yeah. Do they use the Mattawa ski hill? Mattawa, or not the Mattawa, Mattawa the uh, North Bay one. Well, Do they Bay. use, yeah. The North Bay, is it worth our... The one in the I've been against the ski hill from the start. It is only two grand, mm -hmm. but I play a lot of sports and I don't expect my neighbors to pay for baseball diamonds in the North Bay. I don't expect, you know, mm -hmm. The volleyball courts and right. No, I agree. It's not at all. And yeah, it's not just me. I think no, yeah, I know, but somebody has to pay for the buildings and for our our mm -hmm. big uh, roof, uh, reading room, hotel, everything. That's all paid for, and we pay that portion. But to pay for somebody if they want to use the ski hill, that's our portion. And when they go there, they have to pay their portion. But but um, North Bay doesn't pay for our arena or our covered rink. Yeah, but it? there's uh, other parts that we're part of, like we're part of the um, the social services. We're part of the health unit. We're part of a number of things as well. And I just that's just my opinion. Yeah, yeah. But I I to the, I just don't think. $2,000 is a whole lot to, for your portion if people here ski. I think for me, it's the principle, they're Mattawa Conservation Authority. So if if they had, I don't know, some kind of nature thing or flooding thing, a conservation authority and a ski hill for profit are two different things to me. They are incongruent. So... I I think it's going to be moot because I believe the city of North Bay is actually looking at taking over the ski hill away from the yeah. conservation authority. So I don't, I think it, that's the, I think I read it in the media. I yeah. think I read it. And so, then if all the municipalities pay nothing towards it, then right. Right. Yeah. But if the rest of the municipalities pays their portion and we're part of the region, then I just figured that we should pay a portion. Now, it's two thousand dollars if people use the ski hill, and I'm sure there are people that use the ski hill. Maybe kids that go to school in North Bay or our uh, secondary school students, and uh, there's. Uh, um, I I just feel that like maybe there are some of our people use it. Yeah. It's kind of like castle home. How many people do we put in castle home? For the million seven that we're paying. Yeah. We're not on let me say. Yeah. Don't go yeah. there. Do you want my help? No. I'm just going to keep looking. Oh, there it is. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Um, so the next budget is the medical center, mm -hmm. and I've also given you just a, a smaller version of the medical center budget. Mm -hmm. um, so it is broken out into operations and then the building itself. So the medical center one up at the top says Bonfield Medical Center. I'm 
I find the smaller one a little bit easier to read. <laughs> so under 2024, you'll see the revenue that we um, will receive from the new street. And then just off to the right of 2024, that is the amount, that 215 is the amount that we will start to receive in 2025, because we'll have both doctors for two weeks for the full year. Um, again, off on the right down here, you'll see these are all of our building costs. So the building costs, the heat and the, the hydro, the janitor, the water, um, the supplies are, generally $25,000. So this is the section um, there under uh, metal design building. There's a line for 12,000 for rent. And that's the portion that of those funds that we received from the ministry, that they would be um, funds for rent. That would be revenue that we, we classify as revenue. Sorry, there's a $12,000 charge. Uh, Rent. So mm -hmm. under the second section, there's one that's building costs mm -hmm. and the 12,000 is the rent. So it's traditionally been 96, yeah. I think. So I increased it to 12, but that's still only half of what the actual costs are. But at the very bottom, you'll see that the levy for the medical center is actually increasing or the the difference between what the ministry pays us and what it costs to run the medical center this year because of the renovation is $85,000. So that's what we are putting on our tax levy. 85,000. Yes. So 40,000 of that yeah, is the reno. Is the reno. Mm -hmm. And then the remaining portion is gem is um, consumed in the salaries. Um, where we're going from 80 to 155 because now with two doctors, we also need two staff. Mm -hmm. And so next year, this is much softer, but this year it's, it's so pretty heavy. So the two staff, um, what, what's the two staff? Like, what do we do? Like the doctor and secretary. So each doctor would have a secretary. Because one doctor, well, one staff is the office manager. She also does the blood work and um, she brings patients in. And then there still needs to be someone answer the phone, look at the labs, get all the paperwork and everything done. So. <laughs> which is good we need to beef up and we need to make sure that people in Bonfield get to see these doctors mm -hmm. right yes. so yes so this is a top of the list yes Bonfield. top of the list yes. this is a world worthwhile endeavor so, oh absolutely yeah all yeah. kinds of great feedback yeah yeah we're going to attract two doctors yeah so and to... get them like get yeah. them yeah mm -hmm. So the right now we only, we have one and a half staff, and we could look at keeping it one and a half to see how it works before we automatically go to two full time staff. Um, but because the one doctor is not in the office every single day, we only need two staff and two doctors are in full time. So. Um, there may be an opportunity, but I put it in as if there's two people, two staff members right away. But wanted to find out this So um the health levy, which is seventy thousand dollars. Um, yeah, I think that's on the next page. Yeah, so then uh, starting at 621 is all the levies, the healthcare levies that we have. So, on the one hand, they give us money for two doctors. <laughs> and on the other hand, they charge us $70,000 a year. Yes. So, this is for the health unit operations in North Bay. Um, and then there's also the DSAB that is in there as well. I know note that DSAB um, increased by 20,000. Increased? Yes. Yeah. And what service do you do out of that? So well, that's services. all the social services. These are the ones that we are mandated to pay. Yeah. Yeah. 
And mm -hmm. this is the one that is actually enshrined in legislation. Yeah. It's provincial legislation. And so yeah. just so that everyone knows the amount of DSAB per year. $598,952. Yes. Half a million dollars a year out of our budget plus. Yes. Is that a bond deal? Yeah. yeah. Just out of our budget. Yeah. Although when I look, I'm trying to figure out the like I go down the list of who like is it's in order of yes. which municipalities are paying the most. I'm mean, actually sort like Bonfield's up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why are we paying like well like, like I mean it's based on weighted. percentage, it's weighted, but I'm like Capital Cameron, Madawa. What's the size of Madawa? I thought it was uh it's really it's, just the urban. But isn't it is it more than us? Mm -hmm. They're urban in Madawa? Yeah, like what's the population base there? And then uh, and then the tax assessment. Is right? it the complete population or is it just like the hamlets? No. Madawa pays 109,000. Their per term value assessment. How much? Well, their budget allocation for Madawa. 109 million. So and they're paying $245,000 a year. We're paying 598. Yeah. yeah. So like that seems significantly higher for that's a lot of sense of what was like saves us two hundred two thousand. Then why are we paying right. almost doubles? Our assessment is three hundred million, and theirs is only hundred nine million. Because we have waterfront. Mm -hmm. They call waterfront, don't they? Have that whole yeah. yeah. Well, we want to leave. Floods though, so <laughs> it should be. If it's not, actually, that's pretty that'd be a tough though as a municipality for sure. That's like based on assessment, we do have a much higher assessment than we do. All right, give us. I'm actually surprised to see our assessment at 289,816,000. What is that based on? Sorry. That's all of the properties in Bonfield, the value of each the of the properties. Gotcha. I thought it was, isn't it 302? No, is that the other one? Yeah, that's the, the current weight, value, the and weight. the other one's weighted. Yeah, sorry. Hmm. And, uh, sorry. How do we convert from current to a weighted? Weighted on what? You know? It excludes the, um, the PILs. Right. So those are the provincially owned properties. So it's good that. And I'm incorporated, I guess. Yes. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, as it is. I know we have Justin Avery's smart guy, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I won't sit yeah. here and judge his mouth. He's actually been smart, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the MPAC when they say it's well, but MPAC was under general government. So it was well, yeah, why are we paying MPAC when they haven't done an assessment in um, oh, but they accept eight office eight services. Years. They come to our office to help us when he, when residents don't understand our, their assessment, and they come here, they do the assessments, they look after our building permits to make sure those assessments get put on. And so they're still they're still working. We are paying them forty-three thousand dollars a year. It's a four-time staff. Are they here for them? No, not quite. Eh? <laughs> Just, <laughs> are they here half? I'm asking. I'm asking for possibly about a few hundred. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we just paid really well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then there's the castle home. Mm -hmm. um, it's essentially stayed the same, and then the one percent increase um, is for for the reserve, so that we can. Build our reserve and build a, the room in the budget for when we start to pay the loans in 2027. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That is all the levies. Is it, what do our ladies add up to? I'm doing the math here for our many viewers that are watching mm -hmm. because they'd appreciate the know. Well, uh, 867. For, for all the levels. Just we just need to add impact in there, but that's the health unit, three D sag for Castle Home, and then our portion of the loan for Castle Home it is eight hundred and sixty seven thousand five hundred and twenty eight, and then the forty three for impact. And then conservation authority. 
37. 37. That OB, OBB is in there. Oh, yeah. 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 Education. Yeah. I'm right, yeah. I'm just. Okay, yeah. I think so it's gonna. Mattawa is 32988 without the ski hill. And the police is 332,822. Yeah. 332,800. Yeah, you've got the LA now. See, we open these, please, 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 the conservation authority costs thirty-two thousand one eighty-eight. Yeah. The DSAB costs five hundred ninety-eight thousand nine hundred thirty-two dollars. Yeah. MPAC costs. Let's go. I'll give them the 62 cents. Oh, no, you're very confident. Okay, I see the education uh, and OPP. OPP so we don't, account. in our level, we don't. Oh, we have that one. We don't, you have we that don't, we don't pay education. We pay 332,840. It's a pass through, isn't it? Yeah, it's just it a It comes bill. off the tax bill, though. Like when we send out our tax bill, that's what people are paying, like they're used to it. So, yeah. Okay, so with the Healthy and Accomplished Temporary DSAP, MPAC, OPP, Castle Home. Castle Home. Castle Home is 108,500. Plus yeah. our 90,000 so that we can start to build up for the loan. Yeah. Thousand. Okay. Am I missing anything? How much is our total uh, budget annually? Sorry, put the well, back. It's four million. <laughs> this year, this year is five. Back it's four million. This year, the levy um, that with this entire wish list. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Five million two hundred and forty-five. Five million two hundred forty-five thousand four hundred and forty-three. Okay. Well, our levies are one point, almost one point three of that. Mm -hmm. So divided by five, two, zero, four, five. Twenty percent. Yeah, what was that? Twenty percent. Yeah. Yeah. It's roughly fifty percent. Mm -hmm. I think last year when I did the math, it was close to thirty. Yeah. But well, I, I, I did it on the the levy portion, not the entire that spent out for not for, for the left ski deal. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Make a big difference. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Point well taken. <laughs> it's the <laughs> principle. <laughs> um, cemetery, we don't even have to do that. No, science is on there. Oh, and then we get one. into public works. Big one, Alex. Oh. <laughs> All right, find two homeless one for the outer. Yes. <laughs> public works. <laughs> um, No way, if someone. Thank you. I am hot. hot. Are you not hot? No. It is cold. I will. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I heard this in fifteen. Yeah. Do you want uh, a jacket? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Eight hundred on this one. Six forty-six. Um. We have to mind the phones. Um. So we have the. Significant difference in there. The internet we have switched to Starlink, mm -hmm. so that is a much better internet. Um, we no longer have the photocopier. That's sorry, back at the top piece. Yeah. Um, that big yeah. One was in your yeah. Yeah, it was more expensive to fix it than it was to buy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, six forty nine is another um software subscription that we have with the weather amp app um one that's required from the ontario Good roads association you have to print off weather three or four times a day this is just automates of course yeah. um insurance again 653 not it's not a terrible in public works so on our machine so 
Um, training costs that start at 662. The costs are the same, um, but we do have different training that is taking place this year. So I don't know if Alex wants to speak to it. Sure, yeah. Um sending um one of our equipment operators to get his uh TJ Mahoney Road School. He's never been, so he's going to get the first portion, which is construction or maintenance, whatever one they offer. Um, the lead, our lead hand uh, is also going to be sent for training for uh, real roads management, so brushing, ditching, gravel road maintenance, that sort of thing. Fantastic. And mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. uh, myself um, taking another course down at Woodroads for um, – it's more so just an all-around – public works course. So it kind of touches on everything from budgeting to the building. Mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Do you have a training plan or for a five year training plan? Or? Uh, no, like Nikki and myself were working on mm -hmm. planning that out. It was more so waiting to see what staff required training. So we've been going through all our old records and making a checklist on who has what and then what's the common. So. Excellent. Excellent. Good. The capital loans at 666. You'll see those are there are four loans um, that we have for the greater the 2020 Freightliner. Um the culverts and the um, Park Street and Young Street projects that we did. So the only one the next one to um yeah. What's Park the Park Street and Young uh, projects? There was a million old project done, and they did that street, and they did um, Park Street, and they did Main Street. When I, I didn't long, bring that sheet. That was long time. No, you were still thinking. Um, what culprits that, are you paying for? That one doesn't. So the Park Street and Street, um, all that paving, it that loan, it's um. Expires, I suppose, in 2048. Oh my 2048? Oh my. Um, <laughs> Wait a minute. The roads, the road won't be there in 2048. We're going to have to do a road twice by then. Oh. I don't understand. Like, like, how much would that loan be worth? Do we take a mortgage on it? Yeah, like, what interest rate are we paying? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. For that? Yeah. When was this? Oh, it was taken out a long time ago. Yeah, like, but what, oh, what year? Well, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't remember seeing it in my in my head. It was before twenty twenty two on our oh, yeah. Like, so that was, yeah, it so. was probably ten years ago that job was done. Twenty forty two. So it's been a like, what was years. amortized like thirty years? Like how many? How do you amortize? Um, how do you take a payment over thirty years on a road? What bank is that? <laughs> I. Is it a personal well, it might be. Oh. But um culverts that uh is for development room culverts over there that loan expires in 2034. The loan on the 20 2034. <laughs> what was that culvert? But it's not that long. Not it's 2034 is not that. Oh, it's been the 2019 that's 10 years. It's been 10 years from now. Yes. Is it more than 10 years? No, is it one culvert? It's the big one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what was what would a big culvert cost? Oh, a lot of money. Like, I'm looking at it right now mm -hmm. doing to reline it worth two hundred and thirty thousand dollars. And then re, to dig it out, you're you're almost six hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah. Plus now we're gonna finance that over thirty seven years. Um yeah, um, the one for 2020 Freightliner expires in 2029. Uh, but when we get down to the vehicles, you'll see that that's been showing. We took the payment over nine years. Is that what I'm hearing? 2020. It's a 2020, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So nine years. Yeah. We amortize it for 10. Holy lift. Like, what are we paying an interest over all this stuff? I mean, our interest rates on some of them are absolutely fantastic. We're anywhere from like two ninety five to five point one. Oh. Like our interest rate isn't yeah over interest. over fifty years for every loan. Yeah, for every loan. Yeah, and I gave that report at the finance increase. I just don't know what it is at the top of my head right now. <laughs> 
Just yeah, jumping out of it tonight for sure. Yeah. <laughs> right, cool. When you start talking about how many more years we have to go with these things, years. Yeah. Replacing the phone. Oh, they get you. New mortgage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Give yourself something pretty early. Good. Yeah. Um, so six, six seventy five, includes increases with the new flat for um including allowance, some additional for state. And then six eighty four um is the, the big one for the staff. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Page sixteen, yeah. Yeah, line number six eighty four. Thank you. The budget again, full staff, um, with two summer students in there. And we did find, um, we did learn that we were successful for two summer students. One is for public works, so that is 50% of his wages covered. Mm -hmm. What's the other one for the office? And are we at full complement in public works? We are not. The budget is <laughs> for, comp for full complement, but yeah, no, like that's for your staffing right now. We're so how much gapping are we looking at for 2024? Nikki's already budgeted for a full complement, I believe. Yeah. So are you right. Sure? So then there will be some gapping, right? Right, but only for a month. Oh, yeah. So <clears throat> it, it'll month. be minimal. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Sorry, I didn't. So gapping is yeah. the difference between uh, when the position starts and the vacancies, okay. right? So you add the. Right, and sometimes there's forced gapping where in the budget you don't you you budget at the full year, but you don't plan to hire until August. That's planned gapping. Okay. Forced gapping is when people quit or um, right are not there. Or you can't hire. You can't yeah, or you can't hire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, seven thirty-five under bridges. Um, so last year was at 10,000, this year is at 20. So every two years, the municipality has to do a bridge study. So this is the year for the bridge study. And we did talk at the last corporate services meeting about getting a plan for replacing Trump Road. So there's also some engineering fees in there for that. So every two years, you need to do this? Yes. So, so it's, and we were, yeah, and it's 30,000. How much is it for the study? Um, uh, it was just under yeah. ten thousand yeah. dollars. Can we not recycle the study? No. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to have an engineer. Really and fancy photocopier. I saw it back here somewhere. <laughs> um, we do the um the bridge study um with the shared service agreement. Yeah. Oh, okay. All so the municipalities okay. are okay. using. Yeah. We're all using the same engineering okay. down. That's good. Yeah. It's all it's a new one. So there are cost savings in there. Mm -hmm. Patching under 742. Um, you'll see oh. last year it was budgeted at 30,000, came in at 38. But sorry, um, get just back up oh. to culverts, then we're saving a lot of money on contracted services and culverts, okay. right? Let me try uh, three, 737. So we were paying, or were we just oh. not? It's only when we're, yeah, there's no. Allocation works. Yeah, we can do those in house. Yeah, so we're well, not contracting. Yeah, most of them are done in house. Yeah, okay. that's why. I that's... think that's too big for us to do. Yeah. Like if we were planning a road project, mm -hmm. that's where that cost would have been. Right, done. right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you see, coal patching ideally about forty thousand, assuming that the um, rather than end of development road will not be done this year. So I can factor that 40,000. And we can revisit that if we get the plan right. to pulverize development, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Um, sweeping and death line, mm -hmm. um, general costs, the same in there. Um, gravel and resurfacing, so divine 752. I have to hurry so I can oh, keep you guys there from midnight. Yes. But um, gravel, last year we increased the budget. So you'll see in 2022, there was only 66000 spent. In mm -hmm. uh, 2023, we spent 116. And uh, But you can see on the average, then it's about 55000 But we want to start a gravel program. We need a stockpile. The money that was spent in 2023 was the granular A stockpile. Um, so... In this year's budget, I have increased the budget again to another 150 to $150,000. Last year, 
for the 120 because it was such a big jump. Like you can see like we hadn't spent money on that. Um, I used 20,000 of OSIF money um, from the, the funding into the operating budget. And that was that covered that twenty thousand this year. I'm not not filling that twenty thousand, but I put thirty thousand in because I've increased it. You, you can get what that means. But I'm twenty thousand of the granular area problem. The, this gravel is actually being taxed to the to the um, levy, but we could put fifty thousand of the OSA in instead of just the thirty. But the, what else will the well, OSIP pay for? Like, what are we not paying for if we're putting it into ground? Absolutely. Like, Everything. our infrastructure yeah. is critical, right? You know, like all of our... But we... We I need mean, every penny. We need to be looking at a gravel program. I mean, we didn't... We started last year, but we need to continue. I mean, there's not a lot of money, but yeah. it's something that we should be moving forward with because there's absolutely no gravel on these roads. It's just sand and muck. And currently, like currently we're reactively fixing yeah. right. problems, not yeah. proactively yeah. fixing the problems. Yeah. Yeah. We're firefighting, not fire preventing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't know what that looks like, but we should do, should start somewhere. Mm -hmm. Is 150. That's just a stockpile. That's yeah. just the yard stockpile for. Well, 100, probably 116 that we spent last year was the stockpile. Yeah, but this year again, you're going to spend, you need to replenish. I know, 116 on stock. Yeah. And did well, we use that? Did we use your, your uh, travel in the capital budget? I think I've got it. No. Yeah. Not yet. So you need to. 700. So of this 116, how much did we use? All of it? 110. Yeah, there's not much <laughs> left. And did we use, no. did yeah. we use the 110 fixing the roads we currently have, like, like when we talk a gravel program, if we're going to go and we're going to uh, gravel a road, we're, we're going to fix a road, we're going to put, I don't know, four or six inches of gravel in, that to me is like a capital right. gravel it expense. Is. If we're like filling potholes and little jobs here or there, like that's the operating side for me. So how much do yeah. we need to, for that? Is it 100? We need to double. Yeah. We need 150 for stockpile. We need 150 for gravel program. Right. So we, we're spending we as much money trying to patch roads just with for, gravel as just we are. Gravel. I mean, Alex yeah. needs tough, like, so to me, I mean, Alex has kind of got a good game plan of cleaning berms, right. ditching, and then gravel roads. Um, where does the gravel go? Well, they've never, had, they haven't done the gravel program in here in 12 There's years. That, so. Okay, but if I put gravel down... It goes in, that gets pounded into the road. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like you got to gotta think how saturated some of our roads are and how, how wet and punky they are, right? So they're more clay. graphic. Ooh, punky, I like that. Um, they're in clay, <laughs> like a lot of these roads are clay based, so it's getting drove down. But then you're also, oh, putting, okay. you're also putting winter sand on top of that every year. And okay, so the gravel's still there. Well, so no. it's no. gone now. It's gone. Our roads have no gravel base to them because it hasn't been done so long. It just gets pounded down in the clay over time. Okay. Like you're not going to drive down the road and see 10 tons of gravel in the ditch that you can reclaim. Oh. Like it's just, <laughs> it's no longer. Just, I mean, yeah. those big berms yeah. will have some in it, but I yeah. mean, they're junk. Most, most, of, be most of the berm removal we've done, like the buildup has all been sand or silt over the years of plowing. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, like a 10 year program, right? Is uh, if you do a 10 year program based on how much we need for uh, a, not not like what you're talking about to operation. do a whole road, yeah, not a capital, an operation. If we did a 10 year program, is this this is what but you're saying that we need to put in, or is this just keeping our head above water? It's not keeping our head above water. So basically, the stock pile mm -hmm. we wouldn't need to spend as much in that once we get a decent base on the roads because we gotta keep it up. but that's that's the issue like right the staff aren't going to be the ones laying the gravel on the road like we're going to need belly dump trucks just like we did and, uh, on your road yeah and, and the green, 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 green. Yeah. over two hundred thousand yeah. dollars yeah. but i mean we don't have so we don't have to go to two hundred thousand. we have right. to start somewhere like mm -hmm. i mean i think that we should plan out a four-year yeah. cycle of the roads that we all of our gravel roads because you have uh what uh 75 like less than 50 kilometers 20 30 30 kilometers 35 kilometers of gravel roads yeah i think it's about 42. yeah so i mean 
So you take, you take that and, and let's put it into a four year, yeah. 10 kilometers yeah. per year. Right. That's, and what, and that, that would, that's what our road to need study did. It's got many millions. Yeah. yeah. But we start. Yeah. 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 But they're also, they're also figuring that as if you hire contractors in to do all the work. We're trying to do the work in house. Yeah. Yeah. Like essentially, the only stuff? thing we'd be contracting. Yeah. Is so the belly dollars in there for staff user after that built up too much? Yeah. It's not okay. Yeah, okay. yeah there, that there, should have went to that side of that went up like almost a foot. It should it did. eight inches should have been six inches should have been there and, and then should have went to yeah. another row. Not sunny So huh. we've got yours, right? You got uh, the residue south shore. South shore. Yeah. But I mean south shore. So it'll it'll stretch a little bit. Like even if we put a hundred thousand dollars this year for ground for gravel program, we need, we need to start somewhere. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. people yeah. want to yeah. see no, I agree. progress. You cannot yeah. not do anything. No, I agree. No, I agree too. I agree. No, we're gonna see an average. We're gonna see our uh, tax increase at the end and go. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's where I was going. Yeah. With yeah. It. Yeah. But I mean, that's what's happened in the past in yeah. how many years? And we can't. See see the numbers they don't do anything for infrastructure now yeah. we're no, uh, I know. No, I, I we do not need new chairs <laughs> <laughs> that is the number yeah. <laughs> yeah so the line 755 to um 760 um they're essentially the same but the report that we're going to get to eventually on the equipment purchase will kind of may change some of that yeah um we had a good winter though right yeah, we did save quite a bit of sand as well as overtime hours and stuff mm -hmm. like that. We did get very lucky with the winter we had. So, where do we see that in the, in the actuals then? We see that in yeah. 677. Yeah. 677. Yeah. Six, 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 six
from all purchases. Um, with the carbon tax increases and the idea that we want to do more in-house, we've increased the, yeah, makes sense. the gas to 165000 And so again, this fuels all of our machinery. Yes. Right? Okay. Yeah, so yeah. you like pickup trucks, yeah. plow trucks. And that's like green. diesel and regular. It's right? diesel, regular diesel. Zero and, and pre premium gas. <laughs> what? Did you, Did you not get the new ethanol information? No. no. Oh, I think it's crazy. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. That's better. We'll revisit it. But... No, <laughs> no, we don't, we don't have to. Like, I currently think the fiber is all. I cracked. dropped my ruler. We I are. Apologize. <laughs> Um, there is a section somewhere in here about tools, maybe seven ninety seven. Uh, seven ninety seven, yeah. And there's another one in there with two miles too, but uh, that's uh eight twenty one. So what's tools and equipment? Did you budget in for a new uh computer like a uh, pad for the uh, safeties? Yeah. For for your the new program that ever ever comes out for your safeties? Oh it's no, it's gonna be required. But yeah, no. you need like twenty five three thousand dollars for that. I for that. And that was yeah. that's being discussed with our contractor, well, our mechanic, right. who's contracted. We don't know if, but we he's contracted under us. Yeah, but the garage has to. I would. Yeah, each garage has to yeah. buy. So what is that going? <laughs> that's got to go under uh, a well, key, right? Tools. Well, yeah, what are tools and equipment? Is not capital computers? No, like no, shop, like for like shop, like tools. shop tools. Like they don't yeah. own like, toolbox. Like we have, <laughs> we have a small toolbox at the shop, but most of the tools that are there are given by staff members. Oh my god! Um, How do you not have any tools? Well, the mechanic would bring his own. So and her, or her own. Story. You know, uh, Canadian Tire had big sales on their big toolboxes all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my big thing was like. Put a list together. I was been asking the guys and doing um, some surveys on what they need or what they think we need. Mm -hmm. And essentially, I'd like to make a list and then do a cost analysis on that, and then probably just go to Princess Auto or something like that to well, pick up. Yeah, you, you, if it's a ten thousand dollar purchase, you would want to well, get estimates. We generally from. spend around seven thousand, so this is just an extra fifteen. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, you got for you got the uh, equipment and trucks and tools. Yeah, no, absolutely. But yeah, um, there's sales all the time. And I'm sure if you're running a property manager at the entire and said, listen, we're going to buy out, can we get the sale price on all these yeah, tools? Yeah, yeah. Like, we're going to spend 10 grand right now. If you give us kind of the sale price on yeah. right, whatever the tools typically come on sale for. Right. Wrenches and yeah, yeah. toolbox and the like it's, it's just basic, basic, tools. basic tools. Like it's not anything. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 crazy. No. no, no. But to buy, <laughs> like, call me crazy, but to buy wrenches at the entire at full price because they come on sale. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So I would just be like, hey, listen, well, you give us uh, sell prices we buy it all at once instead of us having to wash for sales every week and then build a toolbox over right. six okay. months. Yeah. Have your list and say, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are so we here? Yeah, <laughs> we need it in gas. <laughs> did, we, uh, did we buy a brushing tool? Be no, that's what I'm like. Easy for okay. Capital. Uh, um, so 805 and 808, those are our freight liners. Um, so you'll see our budgets last year 15,000 for one who spent 28, and in 20 for the 20, 2021. Uh, we budgeted 12 and we spent 16. So this is what I was talking about. I and mean, the loans are, the one, the 17 just expired. That loan just finished in 2023. Um, but you can see it's showing its age and the 2020 is something starting to show its age. Um, a new truck is... A 2020 20 should not be showing its age. You guys got to, like, and I know this is going to come off probably not the right way, but, like, we only have two vehicles. They're on the go 24 7, usually, right? So I know, but how many kilometers on that 2020? 
right now? Yeah, just ballpark. Probably 60K. That should be like, probably. I'm it, should be it could be more though. It could be 160K. Let's no, because I, mean, I have a 2020 and I'm old, and we use it all the time and we're only at 30, 40. We're at 40,000 kilometers. So you should be in the same ballpark. But, anyways, shouldn't be needing a ton of them. Did we buy a lemon? The repairs that we that get brought forward to me are like on these vehicles, most of them are quite extensive and it's not. So, okay. Are we looking into why they're so extensive? Also, warranty. warranty. No, 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 we're not, no, we're not on these kind of repairs. No. So, why are they getting? Why is it, it sounds like kind is of is it poor maintenance program? Well, and like, yeah, it's user? it's a user. user. No, no, I wouldn't half. It would be half and half. I'd say half might be user error, but the other half was there's no there was no maintenance program in place for anything. Yeah. Like we're not changing the oil. The, the well, no, we're, no, 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 no. It goes a lot deeper. Yeah. Like we're, yeah. But there is now. Yes, no, there is now. So and there's accountability for. But I mean, that 2020 should be. We should be good for eight to ten years. I'm just saying, it's not the one that's most expensive. It's the 20. It's the 17. No, I so get we, it, but I mean, but we have to. We amortize them for nine years. Ten years. Done and now, most yeah. most and of the repairs done. that are like in these accounts for the vehicles too are related to snow plowing and the plows and yeah, that's like right. stuff, right? And then, yeah, I don't, I don't want to get into it. But <laughs> so in essence of time, we'll say that, you know, we're going to continue to watch these. Let's do the heads up. That yeah, yeah. We yeah. got it. No. It's just another piece of infrastructure that we need yeah. to yeah. in place. But I feel you're on it. <laughs> we should see yeah. maintenance costs go much as they can. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you're, the, well, you're coming in in the middle of the day, right? You know, yeah, you know, yeah, no, I, yeah, 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 I get it. Yeah. Um, just we gotta start holding lives on what you need. So I think then we go into the environmental services, which is eight thirty-two. So the big change on that one is the consultant, the eight thirty-six. Mm -hmm. So. We surveyed the landfill sites in 2023, and then we needed to do the assessment report, um, but it wasn't budgeted for in 2023, so we're going to do it this year, but it is an additional $4,600 for that. Okay. And that cost, I'm pretty sure, goes up every year. Yeah, so that one is just for the volume assessment to see what is that, what's the time that's left to do that survey. Uh, but they do pension does yeah. do an annual monitoring, and they do our annual report. The and there's things? We're looking, we, this is a new year on the contract, so it goes up every year, but this is the first of the next three years. So there is that. What's the difference between the air, like the volume study and what Pension does? So Pension does like the airspace and- Yeah, they also do like a lot. They go, they have monitoring wells around the landfill. They monitor the wells. Yes. They come in and, and there's a couple of different studies they do for the uh, landfill. And I get it, the volume study sounds like it's a requirement. No, well, uh, it's not a requirement, but is a very best practice at least every other year. I mean, but if we're seeing the changes in the air study, like we're we're basically seeing volume come in based on here's last year's number in air study and here's this year's. Can't we actually just? But we don't have those studies from year week. But you could, and you kind of take a uh, like say a five year average, like you do it over five years yeah. average, then you can kind of figure out what you're right. But I mean, yeah, our landfill, I can't believe it grows exponentially. Like I can't believe how move how much we move in that landfill. Right. Like it it like blows my mind how much volume, how wide it gets, how long it gets, and how quick, how much it moves around. Should yeah. it not be moving around? What? Not growing the way I don't mean nothing to do with Alex. It, it needs like we the compactor, a compactor or of something along those to start taking the air. We take no air volume out of right. the, our garbage. Right. It just we throw bulk. We don't shred. We throw bulk material, boats, whatever, heavy plastics, and that all just piles not, up. Right. Yeah, it's, we've had this conversation. Yeah. yeah. No, I know, but I'm just saying. It, yeah. Like I said, that landfill. So is this how much you rent a compactor? Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, really right? it's not a rental. rental piece yeah, it's not a rental piece of equipment. Unless you know somebody that has one. We talked before about uh, 
Like burning stuff, right? Well, clean wood, we should definitely be burning, like really trying to keep that out of the landfill. I mean, that's our cheapest. So I remember the shredders, we talked about that before, you couldn't rent it. There's only one guy that owned them and- Well, the shredder it comes up, crazy money. but okay, he charges, 20, like say $25,000, but I actually, we just did a cost. Like we've been tracking what we charge for um, shredding fees and stuff like that. And we're, we're revenue neutral, like it's zero. It comes out to zero for what we charge and for what he charges to shred, we're at zero cost of township, no money. Who oh. are you charging, sorry? To the, the people. Like like the boat. The boat is so much. And, and like shred big plastics, like say you bring shred. your kids slides and stuff in all that kind of stuff, yeah. that goes to the shred pile. And it gets chewed up, shredded up. And you're doing that once a year? We do it once a year. And you're seeing enough volume come in and that's kind of stuff that you're collecting 25 grand yeah. a year and then spending? Well, yeah. Well, and, and apparently we are too if our landfill is growing. The other half it goes on top of the garbage, is... but it, it goes from a massive pile down to next next to nothing. Sorry, those items I bring in a slide, that slide goes to the shred pile. To a different pile? Yeah, it goes to a different pile. So it's time to shred. Close to where the garbage is because you're going to, the shredder is going to shred it on top of the where the garbage is, and then you cover your garbage with it. But it just takes all the air space out of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we have talked about this. Before. You know, we have, but, but I mean, it's a no, serious No, I think conversation. we need to um, maybe do a, a get more information on what a three year plan looks like. Are we doing fun. fees? To be fair, right, user, user yeah. fees are increasing as well, and there's that will but like, help. We, do you have user fees that say like a boat is this much, yes. or is this, and then you yeah. have a slide? How much do we have that? Yeah. We don't carpet, mm -hmm. like we charge yeah. for carpet, we charge, you know, like everything. We've heard that yeah. the last time we discussed this, it was a different stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm not putting, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and I'm not putting this no, no, out. No, no, it's no, just yeah. conversation. Yeah, something that we should look into though, right? So, in your spare time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because I think people use their yard cleanup, and all of a sudden, like, you know, you know we get like, two yard cleanups a day. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. How many kids' slides? And, and I've, I've had this conversation with a few residents. Like, as much as staff turnovers happen quite a bit at the landfill, and there's new people there, and they're learning the rules and this, that, the other. The other end of things is the onus falls back on the residents. Mm -hmm. they, they're they not listening on where to put their garbage. Or we have contractors coming in that pick garbage up, and instead of dumping it in the appropriate spot, they just feel like they want to dump all the garbage in the garbage pile, right? So that happening, and they've got a key for the landfill, so it's unsupervised when we're in there. Well, yeah, right? So and this is, these are, these are the issues that we've been running into. Me, if the we're contractor is not right? dumping where you so, want it to, the contractor is... Loses, her, his loses his key, loses his privileges. Right. So, and that this is like or I've had this. The, the contractor pays for the staff to, to be there, there to monitor. But right? more than like a key opening. Tied into yeah. the. Well, we're doing a fee for unsorted loads. Yeah. Like, I mean, we got to start cracking down. Like, yeah. contractors should be like, they should be the ones that are doing better. Yeah. And we're paying for an extra staff member to be at the thing still. Mm -hmm. No. no, we've only got two staff members at the landfill. So, well, again, we've talked about this before that as much as it sucks paying somebody, as soon as that one person leaves, residents are going to put whatever they want at yeah. the landfill. But, and I personally don't believe it's it's the problem is paying the person. The problem is retaining the staff member because after three weeks or two and a half weeks of work, what I've seen since I've started mm -hmm. is that. These staff members get disgruntled because they expect yeah, more hours and they uh, feel like they're treated horribly and residents aren't too nice to them, right? So right. It's, I understand it. it's easier to say like, yeah, it comes with the job. But that being said, right, like I don't think in the past it's been fully explained what that position entails or what we'd like to see carried out by staff for that specific job, right? So if it wasn't that we pulled the staff member, it's that you don't have a staff member available. Currently, like, no. We, we didn't change a budget on them or anything? No. We, just don't we, have, we only right. had that budgeted third person while we were pilot. doing the pilot. The pilot program. Uh -huh. And we ended the pilot program and then that did mean that the but, budget and the wage amount that we had. Give me a little communication, okay? Uh, the guy at the gate, or the person at the gate says, uh, has, we have two way radios. Well, because there's a load coming in, I want you to, you know, be there while he unloads this. 
so it, you, you know, make sure it goes in the right spot. I wait, like Nikki and I have discussed this, but this is once again, like the problem that I keep seeing is every single thing that we'd like to do, there's a cost associated with it. Absolutely. And it hasn't been done in the past. So we're essentially forking out all this money off the get-go mm -hmm. for radios and for, you know what I mean? The list goes on. Yeah. Two like, radios from Canadian Tire, like 50 bucks. I know. I'm just saying, yeah. right? Like the money's got to come from somewhere. Yeah, so yeah. is our, is our recycling compliance pretty good now? Like it's, it's pretty obvious where you go with this car. We are yeah. like, yeah, and I know like residents have been great with the recycling side yeah. of things. Most of them like there's, and that's the other half. Having a staff member back there to encourage and uh, talk to this to the public, right? Like, okay, recycling goes here, paper goes here, plastic and cans are here. I wonder when we can transition. Like, we see our compliance good there, right? Obviously, sure. okay. transition go over the face for a while, supporting the learning curve over at the face. Versus, you know, hey, here's where your cardboard goes versus your paper. Well, and just like, like maybe it's kind of a. There are signs, but once again, when nobody's there. Paper signs? Or... <laughs> yeah, no, there's signs. We need one person. No, there's still signs. But no, thank, like, and I don't disagree with Steve, right? Like having one person at the face, one person. Oh, that's ideal. Right? 100%. But it just comes down to. Well, we don't done. have that currently for whatever restraints we have, so we don't have it. Like I'm just saying, if we see the compliance is good at recycling, and we're struggling at the face, maybe we just make sure that for the next couple of months, spend 80% of your time at the face and 20% of your time at recycling. Go over to check recycling. Yeah, and back. Yeah, yeah. And so, sorry, why are people yelling at the... Well, not so much, like, people aren't... I'm not saying people are yelling at our staff members. Oh. I'm just saying... Well, they like, do get hostile. There is, like, there's been quite a few confrontations with staff members and the public. Like, I know once I told staff members that I'd like them to start checking loads at the gate, mm -hmm. Um, there's been quite like quite a number of people that attend the landfill that don't think that the staff that are working have the privilege to look in their vehicles at what what's being brought in, right? And it's not it's not everybody. Like there are a select few. But, so maybe uh, talk about, like you know. But maybe that's something that our social media should be taking care of as well, right? That you know. Those and like I per like I personally don't work the landfill on the weekend. This right. is just. Secondhand yeah, information yeah, through yeah. staff members that do right. right. So I mean, I think part of the deal is because <laughs> when I go to the landfill and I say I have two bags, I'm supposed to have two bags and two clear bags, right? So I would have, I should have no issue in somebody saying, "Can you just pop your trunk for me or whatever?" Right? right. The, put the gate down. Anyways, and um, only because yeah. it is. This is what we're running. We're running a per bag system, right? If it was a dump, however much you want system, it would be different. Needless to say, landfills got ways to go yet. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay. The next one is parks and recreation. So we still um, we have finished our reserve of requires for the skateboard park. So. I uh, still put in 2000 so we can start on the spot plan and the equipment so that we can start to close that because there's already that space in the budget. So let's start putting a reserve in. Oh, it's going into reserve. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I'm like, what are we replacing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we're, we're planning. Okay, we're being proactive. Good. Yeah, no, good. Good. Uh, Insurance went up again. Talked about um, our loan, actually, it renewed in. Um, 2022, and the we are paying at least 1% less now, so there's some funds in there. What is the loan on? Uh, the outdoor rate curtain. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Is it amortized till 2050? No. I didn't write that one down. So what I don't see here, we've had the conversation a few times from a council is potentially looking at moving the skateboard to put park outside so that mm -hmm. we can start looking at holding events or allowing events to be held and making money off of the covered area, which now has curtains and now has all of that. So like, it would be nice to see what the cost to resurface, whatever we need to do to be able to get the skateboard to park outside. So you're gonna have to go with some end. Sure. Yeah. So. I don't, I don't, well, like, I don't know. Do like, I, I can get you a quote, no problem. But like, so you're going to have to rip that up, right? And then yeah. you need a base and then you'll need forms and then concrete. So yeah, no, I give you guys. Like, it would be nice to be able to have that conversation. I think like the business case for me isn't hard to make. Like, I don't, if we're talking 
quarter million dollars, well, then it's probably hard to make will be several years return on investment trying to rent out for you. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's not that, yeah, then it would be interesting to see because what an amazing venue we have that's just going underutilized. Like, especially now with the we've set it up, there's an ability to have a liquor license in there, there's like weddings and everything else. Like well, if you want an outdoor wedding. More choice than than actually we keep moving the uh skateboard equipment and it's going to knock the life well, out it's, of it constantly. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you guys, like it's almost there now just yeah. for moving yeah. it around so much. We move it so. once permanently, fix it, shrink wrap it around and whatever. Yeah. In the winter, like it could just sit there. You it's, shrink wrap it. It's not that hard. Well, at least to it. It's yeah. just from essentially the equipment picking. Yeah. Picking. So once we move it and so if we get, you know, again, if we go back to, if we have our own equipment in house, we could do all the prep work. We can do everything. And then just have someone come in and pour the concrete and float it. Right. Yeah, that arena, you put the basketball nets under there, or a new basketball nets under there going sideways. It's covered because they play under there on the top or a ring. And then there's still the uh, east trough issue. issue looking at too. So that the, when it pours rain, it's not leaking onto the floor. But the mm -hmm. floor is super slippery. If we're going to rent it out for mm -hmm. events or have kids playing under there, we need to fix that each problem. So I know I'm, I'm asking to add the potential costs into this budget, and we're going to get scared. Well, remember, we're in the part 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 reserve. Yeah, but I've heard two or three different numbers, and I don't have accurate numbers on what's actually in the reserve. Yeah. Oh, because if we committed and said we'll take it out of reserves, but all revenue until that reserve is replenished goes back in reserve, mm -hmm. at least, you know. Mm -hmm. So we're going to plan out the two things that could be really beneficial for that part. I think we should uh, also look at doing something with that splash pad to keep the geese off the bed. I don't know what can be done. What are you doing Saturday morning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I like, and I even just from like having the geese and birds like on the docks and stuff mm -hmm. like that, right? Like, there's not much deterrent you can do to keep the geese off. The only thing you can is like, you're gonna have to put up some kind of snow fencing or it'll look fine. Like, but the, no. even like like I've tried everything from fake birds to oh, sounds yeah. to yeah. yeah. We uh, had a coyote line, scared you, me more than it scared so, first. I don't know how beneficial it would be, but a lot of places have gone to a falcon. Mm -hmm. Maybe a local guy that does that. Is there? Yeah. So, like, if we brought him in, I don't know how often it is, a couple times a week for a month. Maybe they all chase off. I don't know. Like, that's the only other like, oh, yeah. option. No, it'll chase them off, but you need the falcon it's there all the time. Chain link fence around their stuff. Yeah, even then, it's they could fly. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, if you just put it right around the splash pad mm -hmm. itself, like, so you have a gate. Uh, gate into the, yes. Into so at the least, yeah. They're not going to fly and swoop into the. No, right. yeah. They're I just agree. following the grass. But I mean, if we have it, you know, down, some we can look at, but like a chain link fence right around the splash pad. Where yeah, that's a good idea. So the grounds for the swamp we will hold the chain ring fence. Yeah. <laughs> no climbing on it. Yeah. <laughs> they were strolling by, strolling up there by the tracks the other day when I went out. Maybe, yeah. So they're looking at things to do it all. Geo-desic film. Yeah. So in the right budget, 878 to 880. I kind of summarize um, between events and programs. Parks and maintenance, and then the administration expenses that are in there. So we're similar on the budget, but we are actually um, lower than last year's budget. So if we wanted to, there is a little bit of room. Hold on, we need it. Sorry, I'm just. Mm -hmm. Oops, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, 880. So there's events and programs, and if you look over, it's like that's a total of all of the numbers above. So all of the events and programs that we run are $20,000. Um, all of the cost of parks and maintenance is $32,900. Uh, and then there's the administration fees, which are $22,800. Mm -hmm. So that, and that just summarizes, it's on my spreadsheet electronically on all the other costs that are under parks and rest. So last year we budgeted eighty seven. We spent what? Well, Six seven thousand dollars. But sixty eight. 
Yeah, we budgeted than, 87. Yeah, we spent. We spent 63. 63. Yeah. 83 is the uh, five-year average. Yeah. Oh, is the average. Yeah, is the average. Okay. I can't, I tried to highlight it. <laughs> Right. Library is pretty much done by the library. Their numbers are in. And then it's the planning and development. So not much on this either, um, except for as I was saying about the um the fees for 931 for the planning consultant. So that's offset by 50% in the room. Okay, go ahead. So overall, the increase um, from 2023 to 2024 budgeting uh, is uh, 463, you know, 481,295. Um, that's in, you can see that in my V. <clears throat> the 463 is the difference between the total expenses. So the 5.2 million is total expenses. The 3.9 is the, um, the net. So that's taking into account the revenue. So the increase is an 8.84 levy increase. Opta um, was not available today for me to go in to figure out what that means for a tax increase. So the levy increase right now is 8.84, but the entire expense increase was 9.1%. Wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Isn't it 30 grand for 1%? Yeah. Yeah. Was that yeah. yeah, 30 yeah. grand. The so last year we were we our levy was three point five. This year it'd be three point nine. With this wish list. Say that. Sorry. Repeat that. Last year's Around. levy increase was three point five million. This year's with this wish list is three point nine seven seven. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And, then we and I don't know what that is for the tax rate yet. Um, but I know this is a wish list and you can be amended. Um, so then the other two pieces or three pieces of paper to share that are in your package. Um, one says investment, one says reserve. And I think this is one of the good news. Sorry. So if we go to reserve first, um, so in total, in 2022, we ended the year with 1.7 um, by fourth in reserves. And then we added 103 into the reserves. I don't have that. What is that? Right here, okay, right here. So the fire department capital equipment of seventeen thousand six hundred, we have. They just didn't spend it, right? Well, that was that was fifteen thousand that we put in. We didn't spend okay. fifteen thousand on budget year. Right. That is the fifteen thousand. We had already planned for the twenty six hundred in reserve, so it's the okay. fifteen plus expenses. So that's where our reserves end. Um, you'll see that the tax rate stabilization reserves at seventy five thousand. So. Uh, in the actuals, I have not actually done that entry. Um, so if there's a surplus, I mean, you have to do an entry, but if there's a surplus, we can put some of that surplus right back into that reserve. And then in this budget, I have not taken any money from that reserve, which we absolutely it took can. It was $25,000 a year that's been spent? 75. Oh, and, 75. oh, sorry, 75,000. Yeah. And we have 19 million. Yeah. Wait, one more year. Mm -hmm. Or not. So. Um, parkland reserve and skateboard reserve. Mm -hmm. It's like 50 k for a lot. Yeah, so skateboard is for the skateboard park. It's uh, part of that trillion grant. That's one that we just finished. Right. Could that not include like a ground board? It could be new equipment. <laughs> and mm -hmm. part of it. And ground prep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, certainly. You can look at that. It's all for the skateboard. Uh, yeah. Could, when you get a trillion grant, they expect you to put the reserve away so you can replace the equipment. Mm -hmm. As long as there's a plan on what will happen and get some equipment so we can do. Parkland reserve, that is the money when there's land consents and they have to take, um, so we either get 5% in lieu of 
um, for parkland and catch, or they have to give us land for parkland, which we don't need more parks. So that's what that was. So when the skateboard equipment yeah. end comes to the end of its life, if council, whether it's us or the council of the day, decide we no longer want a skateboard park, mm -hmm. that money can just slide in. I'm not suggesting that we don't. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it, uh, it is quite. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite. Yeah. yeah. I'll figure it all time. Yeah. And yeah. by a lot of people from folks out of Boston. Yeah. Who should I charge them? The ones in North Bay aren't, uh, they don't have the same equipment. Um, and it's tons of people. So a lot of teenagers that now drive come here, probably to one mile last year when I was at the park, because they're not. Kind of a good thing now. Mm -hmm. They're going to actually mm -hmm. get actually ride a little bit and not bump into people. Mm -hmm. What's the MMAH uh, uh, that's the efficiency grant? Yeah, yeah. So that pays. So we're taking some funds out in 2024. That 52,000 that was in the revenue is coming out of that reserve for counties. The section at the bottom is for deferred revenue, so the um, the OSIP. So there's 133,000 of that left, plus we get $100,000 in 2024. The Nords we used completely in 2023. That's how we did um, part of development. And in 2024, we get another 89,000. It's the one that's gonna end probably in 2025, but we're hoping that they'll carry forward. The cannabis we have to use on something related to cannabis. Oh, so we get to buy and stuff? Related to yeah. cannabis. Yeah. Yes. That's where I was going. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> I, it took me a moment. It's yeah. The weed, the weed yeah. Is it the weed and stuff? No. <laughs> no, that's funny. But, okay. Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Public something. education. Um, oh, in the, it's a lot of public education. You can buy a lot of going around to monitor parts. Like, yeah. Really. <laughs> That's a lot of public education. Yes. How much of it? Twenty-two. 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 Did you say we had a <laughs> yeah, like we get our bylaw officer to also yeah. do education, yeah. so just to actually use it for. Uh... Yeah, all said his range. So, yeah. so um, part of public education could be putting up boards around a skate park that don't say do don't do your or yeah. do drugs responsibly 100%. or. Don't do drugs. Yeah, like like Twenty-two thousand dollars a year. Yeah. So, and then we can buy like the nice it in the new concrete. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, right? <laughs> we could use uh, the public signs. Or... I like our. Yeah. I like okay. our saying better than Donna's. Well, what, We're saying don't use. What like other? What <laughs> other cannabis related? Thing can we spend twenty two thousand dollars on? Correct, yes. Everybody's probably having a hard time finding that. They're not even need to bring the, the, the way to use it. We could film our own after school stuff. It was a pretty <laughs> good. <laughs> God, to be the dare bear. Yeah. Yes. So, and then there's the gas tax, which is. We're just moving uh, on. Yeah, you're yes. like not even entertaining her. She wants to go home. And then there's the 377000 that's remaining in there in that reserve. And then we're going to get another $100,000 this year for it. So, why are we not going to. We, why are yeah, we're going to 50000 out of that for gravel. We can. Okay. So that's it. But these are the opportunities, and I could bring to you guys before we start talking about so the, the capital. Yeah. So okay. here's our reserve and our deferred income. Um. So deferred income, you'll see there's eight hundred and twenty three thousand. Once you get the twenty twenty four numbers in there, the thirty thousand I've already earmarked for the budget for the OSA for the gravel. So that leaves us three hundred and seven hundred ninety three thousand for um in deferred revenue for something. Because we haven't really talked about capital yet. I'm sorry, can you repeat that last one? There I is. It the phone will be in the room. I'm going to start to the door. I'm still not trying to figure out how to get stuff in the door. Yeah. 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 All right, it's a phone beat, so we can get the. Sorry, get a picture of me. Yeah, I can't even make that. That's honestly, I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I shouldn't have tried to defeat that. Yeah. Right. So there is a total of 793,000. Yeah. 780 that's in deferred revenue that we can we can use those. In 2024. Yeah. Um, well, but this is what we use for all of this. So, you may want to just. 
What we get in 2024, we get in 2025. So this, that's the only guaranteed income that we know that we're right. going to get. Right. I mean, because yeah. I kind of think your game plan is to kind of clean up ditches and stuff this year and, uh, and um, then yeah. use this money on development the following year. It's kind of... Yeah, essentially do the prep work first, right? Mm -hmm. So the roadside brushing, ditching, get everything prepped, and then then we are not going back over the surface that we're right. replacing and mm -hmm. wrecking. Yeah, it makes that, total sense to do the prep work ahead of time and pulverizing that one third of development down there. Well, so, so that we can create an occasion. Right like, now, some people, people are losing their suspension. Right. right, people are going to swap, but in the long run, that is the best thing to do. And yeah. I think too, if we get a good grade on it and some compaction, and then hammer the yeah, calcium, calcium, calcium to it, to it. like yeah. edge to edge calcium yeah. at like a rate three, you it it'll hold it really good. Not a rate two. No a rate two. Uh, and how much would that cost? Three versus two. No, I'm just kidding. For, for the, I mean, uh, pulverization you, yeah. on the four kilometers, you're probably. Is four kilometers what's left? No. No, no there's, there's eight. Oh, there's there's eight. Eight. Yeah. 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 But four. there's like four that are really, really, really bad. Really, really, really bad. That yeah, yeah. At least we can maintain. Like, yes. At least okay. we can maintain two. Yeah. yeah. At least we can maintain it with a greater. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're, Is you're, that what you help. did to that asphalt thing on Pine Lake? Like, do that? No. Oh. That's not what uh, you know, that no, yeah, no, I ended up mixing gravel back so in that actually work to, com to work it, oh. and then it, it'll essentially compact itself back in because the recycled asphalt is more valuable. Oh, okay. So Paul Roger, the sun, right? We're kind of looking yeah. at it, Paul Roger comes in and crushes, chews it all up, okay. we grade it all up back to where it should be, and then you put the calcium to it, and it'll harden up basically back like the chip seal, but at least when it does get potables in it, we can grade it, grade them out. Right. And we're not spending forty thousand dollars in coal oh, ash. Right. Mm -hmm. So how much will that? Like a grade a four kilometer grade, you're probably like four hours of the grader's time. I mean just roughly. Yeah. I mean the only other option and like it's very expensive is to take hot mix. And spread over yeah, top, right. but it still doesn't. It's a, it's just a band aid. Right. It doesn't fix the. And we plan on doing the, that end of development starting at the worst end now and coming forward. This would be the best option to pulverize it, put the calcium to it. At least we can maintain. Yeah, it. it's maintainable. Okay, and how much is that for? Home? Like to pulverize, it's going to be twelve thousand eight eight to twelve thousand dollars to pulverize it, which is minimal. Not even they won't even be that much. Okay, so let's say it's twenty thousand. Let's say it's twenty thousand and that we take out of here. And then the hundred and fifty for the gravel program, because that's essentially five percent, is it not from the operating? If it's thirty thousand for one percent mm -hmm. at one fifty. So if we took that out uh and used this money, and that still would leave us over five hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars here. So you're not saying like take out the stockpile hundred and fifty thousand, but take, add the fifty thousand to the deferred revenue. So there'd be a total of one hundred and fifty for the stockpile and one hundred for one row. No, okay. I'm saying instead of having one hundred and fifty and uh, the operating, okay. use the the, the deferred oh, revenue oh, in place just, of that. I know you're sorry. Okay. So oh, then we're saving five percent right off the top. But it's, we we can't recoup that five percent deferred revenue as fast as we're going to spend it. Like, if you're going to do that, well, that would be a difference. It's not going to be a difference. And taking the tax stabilization, you can send a lot of money. You can basically send a system like that. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Because that's what we're yeah. fundamentally yeah. opposed to robbing the one time. Peter to pay Paul. Paul. Two, two pass. That's, that's what we're bargaining. Now, I'm okay with it on no project specific things like flipping gravel. I think you get a pass. Yeah. But you only complain about it. You can probably spend that. So rather than not on the operating, that's like that's really the only thing. Is it the one that we don't see crap? Yeah. <clears throat> so I that's mean, where we are. Yeah, it's an expensive print for we're saving it on coal patch like 40 grand a year. And so we're not planning on leaving it go too long, but and how are we uh, fixing the unfunded amount? Are we doing that gradually or yeah? So if we look down at the next one, you'll see the 
the reserves plus the uh, deferred revenue equal 2.1 million. Yeah. Is that number? Yeah. And then the difference, uh, well, in our actual investments, which is the next page, we have now we have 1.4 million in investments. So the shortfall is 672. Of that, we have a million in the bank. And we have 298. That's unfunded. Yes. These, this is how it's funded, though. Okay. That's 672. So our bank account is actually at 1.6 million right now. Our monthly operating costs are about six hundred and fifty to seven hundred thousand dollars. So there's essentially no dollars. Okay. And that's what it's been funded. And then of course our tax arrears in 2023, we ended the year with a much higher tax arrears than 2022. So we'll work on that and, and try and get we don't know why people just didn't pay. Yeah. But yeah. we're we're just sending letters and oh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Interesting. Oh yeah. I wonder, yeah. Huh. Mm -hmm. And like we like if we saw it trending, it spiked, the unpaid. I haven't seen all the past years, so I mean it comes out again in the. Um, I can look back because I think at the finance retreat I showed the the ministry report, and it had five years of history on what the tax mm -hmm. arrears were. Because it's one thing to say, oh, I didn't twelve dollars of unpaid yeah. taxes, and it comes in at mm -hmm. two hundred, but that's irrelevant. And I think it'd be if we're constantly coming in at two hundred ninety eight thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, this seems high. It is, yes. Yeah. 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 So we'll work on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Take your music. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Honestly, all of a sudden the, the charge seems a little less. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, we'll eat the charge. <laughs> the next page is just the investments. Um, highlights in there are generally just, you know, we have, we deal with just whatever the bank. Um, so those are our half values in there. Why 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 do we deal so many things? Is that not ahead of for you? Um it, no. Well, we're dealing with Scotia but, and National. But we all they they shop around for the best rates. Yeah. So who's offering the highest interest rate? Who's I hiring um, the lowest loan rate? So that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So that's good. Um the good news story in this one is if you interest in 2023 on uh some of our had them all together, but um, we're close to 65,000 in interest earned. So that certainly does help build up our investments. Can I ask a question? Yeah. So I see the renewal dates, mm -hmm. lots in May coming up, some in August and then in January. Mm -hmm. Should we not be locking them in for such a long term to get them all to renew on the same day? So can we leave it just, you know, we might not collect as much interest this year, but then to dance them, shop that larger amount right. around and go like, who's going to give us the bigger amount? Right. We'll move all of our money in. Some of these smaller ones, I don't understand why we have like one hundred fifty-four thousand. Why can't that be lumped together? Right. Right. So, yes. um, Meridian Bank is actually been trying to to connect with us so that this is before these renew. I want to sit with him to see yeah. what we do, how this looks. Yeah. How, and, what's the best bank for a buck? How is it? Yeah, and it might most be. Efficient? It might be the ones that are renewing in May. Mm -hmm. We're going to renew for a very short period. Yeah, until August. Until yeah, August, well, yeah. and collect crap and interest. I'm sure. Yeah. But with the greater goal of now, all of a sudden we're shopping around. Mm -hmm. What do we got? Five hundred and sixty thousand yeah. dollars there. Yeah, exactly. Now all of a sudden we're going to a bank and going, "Who wants five hundred sixty thousand dollars? What interest rate will you give us?" Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So this are we putting it in this is our reserve? Like this is how we're. So, are these just GICs? Is that what yes. it is? Yeah. Yeah, but there could be other products or other. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. That, yeah. So we have to sit down and have a. Yeah. And a really. So good that's coming up. Analysis. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. And I think that'd be more a little bit so more personal me. service so too, and answer the questions that we have. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> May eighth is coming as well, so I just like. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean? Like, uh, May 8th is coming up quick, so uh, you're going to be asking, uh, and 14th is right after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then so, May 29th. So. Yeah, so I'm like, we're going to have to make some kind of strategy. Yeah, and I can still even just do for like a two months of a yeah, one month. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I did one month in 2023 because I should have had to cash some of these out in order to pay for all of the infrastructure. Yeah. Like we spent yeah. $770,000 in 2023. I should have had to cash, but the bank, we had enough of the, the surplus in the bank that 
Yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah. Just kept her a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That is good. Yeah. So you've got a uh, meeting for the Caribbean then? Awesome. I don't know why it's set up right now. It's three months since it's back. It's under the Caribbean. Yeah. 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 There's no one for him to make G. Yeah, it's two dollars. Oh, okay. And it's meeting from some. We're talking yeah. equipment. Oh, yeah. Don't, don't 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 <laughs> I know. So, bigger. Okay. Yeah. It's all out. Yeah. 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 Uh, so just a bit of background. So the township currently owns two backhoe loaders. One is a 2015 Case 580 SN and the other a 2004 Case 580 SN. Over the past two years, 22 to 23, these pieces of equipment have cost the total sum of $96,062.36 in maintenance and repairs. The 2004 required $9,361.27 worth of repairs in 22 and $5,827.21 worth of repairs in 23. For the 2015, we're looking at $43,970 in 2022 and $36,903 in 2023. What are you doing to this? We're half the cost of our yeah. equipment. <laughs> right? That's why this reports it. I've seen the credit line. I don't think you need to talk to with more, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had it that. Yeah. Um, so, lastly, the cost incurred in 2023 for tire replacement and repairs on both of these pieces of equipment total $4,969.75. Uh, the replacement of a backhoe with an excavator can then also be used at the landfill site to cap, cover, and move waste and materials. This past cost for tire replacement and repairs will no longer occur as the excavator moves on tracks, not tires, allowing it to move on all types of materials without damage. The excavator also has a dozer blade attached to the front of the machine, allowing it to be used to push waste material uh, into a pile if needed. With the replacement of both these pieces of equipment, the overall operating cost and maintenance uh, and repairs <laughs> will be exponentially lower. Um, so equipment quotes were obtained from the big three equipment suppliers. So I reached out to Case, John Gary, and Kat uh, for the purchase of a new backhoe loader, as well as the purchase of a excavator um, as permitted under motion six from the March 12th, 2024 meeting. Um, the big three suppliers had a chance to attend the public workshop and inspect their existing backhoe loader to provide trading values for each piece of equipment. <laughs> The quotes that were uh, obtained for the trade-in of the 04, as well as the 2015 backhoe, range from $15,000 to $50,000 per piece of equipment. It's a pretty big range. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, following the purchase of a new excavator, it is also suggested that the township purchases a new brush hand unit uh, for this piece of equipment. If purchased, the brush head would be run on the new excavator, allowing staff to complete roadside brushing in-house instead of contracting it out, which has been our past practice here. Uh, the current program has $20, uh, $21,000 budgeted for roadside contracted brushing services. The cost of a new FAE forestry mulcher is $43,750. Okay, part of two years. Almost two. Yeah. So the quotes that were received in 2024 for the purchase of the backhoes and excavators follow as listed. So you guys can kind of just follow along with the charts. Um, Cat, a 2023 313 excavator with a 36 inch tooth bucket, 60 inch ditching bucket, and a hydraulic thumb with 12 months warranty. They quoted us at $315,000. Uh, John Deere for a 2023 135 excavator with a 36 inch tooth bucket and 54 inch ditching bucket, hydraulic thumb, blade, steel tracks, and hydraulic pin uh, grabber coupler. Came with a one year comprehensive warranty, six months service travel included, and three year or 10,000 hours structural warranty. Uh, the quote received was $345,000. Now, John Deere also gave us another option. With a used piece of equipment, uh, it was a 2019 135G excavator 
that had 825 hours on it. It also came with a ditching bucket, tooth bucket, blade, hydraulic quick cup blade. Um, the warranty with that was freight and service, uh, $13,000. There was no warranty. So the quote for that used piece of equipment was $271,000. Um, case for an excavator uh, offered us the CX145D MSR with a blade, hydraulic pin, grabber coupler, a 60 inch ditching bucket, bucket and a 42 inch tooth bucket with a thumb. Um, three year, 300 or sorry, three year, 3000 hour full machining warranty from factory or a three year, 2000 hour planned maintenance program um, was $285,325. Nice case, so competitive. Like it's that's really for a brand new piece of equipment. Yeah, they were exponentially lower. But are they giving you fifteen thousand for the trade? <laughs> and yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. Oh, okay. so, easy. Okay. <laughs> so just um, so is are these all relatively the same? Same size. Apple style. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, same okay, size. But how come some has the thumb and some doesn't have the thumb? Well, only only cat. Well, cat they, they all have all these have thumbs. Yeah. yeah, for excavators. Okay, high flow. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For the hydraulics, it's for the bolster head, yeah. uh, for the guy to stand on the end. Like. Um, so they're all basically the same. Yeah, yeah essentially they're the exact, exact, exact same. 2003, 2004, 2019. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then backhoe quotes uh, cat for a 2024 420 backhoe loader with 12 month complete machine warranty. Or five year, five thousand hour warranty was one hundred ninety one thousand five hundred dollars. Um, now I will just mention that that quote. Um, if you guys look at your chart, there's some stuff that's not included in there compared to the other quotes. Um, like a dipstick. <laughs> yeah, like a dipstick. And that, like a dipstick. It's an extendable dipstick. Dipstick first. Yeah. So the John Deere. Uh, Quoted a 2024 320p backhoe with extendable dipstick, a front coupler, uh, which is one and two way flow, a uh, 42 inch quick coupler, a 42 inch thumb, and a heavy duty bucket cylinder. They're offering a one year comprehensive warranty, six month service travel, three year or 10,000 hour structural, and a three year, 3,000 hour full. Oh, sorry, that's the case. Um, that was yeah, three thousand uh, ten thousand dollar yeah. structural yeah. So that was two hundred seventeen thousand dollars. Uh, case for their twenty twenty four five eighty SN backhoe loader with eighty two inch front bucket, twenty four inch rear tooth bucket, and a quick attach on the front was three year three thousand hour full machine warranty or a three year uh, two thousand hour plan maintenance. It came in at two hundred twenty three thousand seven hundred forty dollars. Uh, now here's your trade values. So oh, wait, before you get to sleep, I'm gonna ask you a dumb question. I kind of feel like me. Yeah, <laughs> so I didn't want to say that. <laughs> so I stopped myself. Okay, so I don't know what an extendable dips dipper stick is, but it's obviously a big enough thing that they put it as part of the quote. So so on like on your digging part of the backhoe, right? Yeah. So the back the digger. Um, you can extend your boom to reach further into the ditch. Okay. That's what the they all have. have it. I don't know why they mentioned it. Okay. Yeah, that's just it's what's there. Yeah. Like the, the cat would have that. Yeah. Yes, they all okay. have it. It just I don't know why uh, John Deere whoever said case said it. But anyways, so a forty-two inch quick coupler with a forty-two inch thumb, yeah. but then the case only has a twenty-four inch rear tooth bucket and an eighty-two inch front bucket. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so want to maybe front bucket than rear. I know, but <laughs> okay, moving on. Moving on. That's what the ones about you want. Yeah. The but what about the 42 inch quick couplers? This so your quick couplers, um, you either hit a button in the cab and it hydraulically pulls your pins so you can switch attachments. So you can drop, change buckets for the right. okay. And the other half, you get out to the hammer and Banger oh, comes out of okay. I just don't understand so why. 42 inch quick coupler. Okay. Okay. Got it. 
Okay. Yeah. A lot of the trades. Uh, so trade values, cat. Uh, I'm still waiting for their trade values. I haven't received any yet. John Deere came in at twenty thousand dollars in the two thousand four case, and fifty thousand for two thousand fifteen case tobacco. Wow. So that offsets the. Uh, yeah. Case came in at twenty thousand for the two thousand four and thirty five thousand for the two thousand fifteen. So the purchase of the new equipment would allow the public works department to spend adequate time with the proper resources to fully brush and bleach the township in preparation for all future work. Before any further surface or structural integrity work is done on the township roadways, they will need to be brushed as well as ditched. With the proper sequence of events, brushing followed by ditching, followed by surface treatment, the township infrastructure can be brought back up to par as well as minimal damage to the roads as the work is being conducted before the surface treatments. Also, with this new equipment, the Public Works Department can utilize it in the landfill to move waste, cover and cap the pile, move material, and push bins without damaging tires. Um, so our financials, additional revenue. Over the past three months, the Township has accepted a large contract for third-party dumping of contaminated soil from a property in Rutherland. The contractor has dumped approximately 248 loads to date, at a total fee of approximately $100,000. There's also been other contractors dumping at the landfill with bills approximately totaling $5,000. With this newly generated revenue from the landfill site totaling $105,000, the funds can help pay for the new equipment as it will also be utilized at the site. So our cost recovering operations, uh, the past contracting cost for roadside brushing was $21,000 a year. The excavator rental, for 2023 for Pine Lake ditching total of $9,589.78. And the tire replacement bill for the landfill was $4,969.75. So the significant past equipment repairs that would not be incurred on a new piece of equipment. Um, therefore, leaving approximately a $50,000 minimum that can be saved from the current operating budget. Following the purchase of an excavator and brush head, the Public Works Department can then move all the formerly contracted services to in-house, performing such things as ditching, brushing, and large culvert replacements with the new excavator purchase. This will initially cost the township a significant amount of money for the purchasing of the equipment and attachments. However, the budget of $21,000 for brushing compared to the purchase price of the brusher head at $43,750. The return on investment will be 2.1 years. For cost addition, moving in-house, the township would only include the cost of an operator, which is already included in the annual budget, plus fuel costs. The new equipment, being the excavator, is said to generate 15 to 30% less fuel consumption, even while running a brush head, compared to an older piece of equipment. So in a 40-hour work week of brush brushing operations, uh, cost is projected to be less than $1,060. Uh, the tank size average being 200 liters on the excavator and diesel purchasing price currently being at $1.168 a liter equals $233.60 per tank of fuel. On average, a piece of equipment this size uses approximately 14 liters of diesel per hour, but with the new technology that uh, has been offered by Case, um, they're claiming it's burning seven liters per hour of diesel, resulting in 280 liters of fuel burnt in a 40 hours of runtime. Uh, this equals a fuel cost of $327.04, bringing the overall operating cost between $1,319.84 and $1,385.84 for a 40 hour work week. Uh, the additional $43,750 needed for the brush head purchase can be balanced from the recuperated cost of tires, maintenance, and repairs of the equipment from the existing budget. As mentioned above, this cost would essentially pay for itself in just over two years. So I'll go back to just the start. So um, the recommendation was that... Uh, the public works manager recommends to council the replacement of the current 2015 backhoe loader with a 2024 John Deere 320P backhoe and the replacement of the 2004 case with the purchase of a 2024 case 145 excavated. So that just kind of falls into the purchasing price breakdown on the next page. 
So if you take the excavator and backhoe, uh, two hundred seventy one thousand two hundred dollars for the excavator plus your two hundred seventeen thousand for your backhoe, it leaves a total of four hundred eighty eight thousand two hundred dollars minus our seventy thousand dollars in trade in, leaves four hundred eighteen thousand two hundred minus your revenue from the landfill site at one hundred five thousand, um, and then the non-rebated tax being approximately $6,500 leaves $319,649.41 that we need. Um, so there's some options here. Uh, option one, council takes a loan to pay the required amount of approximately $320,000 for the set equipment purchase. Uh, the equipment is amortized over a 10 year period at a base rate for a five year loan would be $64,000 a year. With the interest rate of 6%, the total interest would be approximately $57,500 on the purchase price. Option two, council takes a loan from reserves and investments, paying back the loan amount plus interest, excuse me, to investments. This could be under option one or four. Uh, there are other projects that will require completion during the five-year loan period and the reserve fund would not be available. Uh, option three, council uses 100% funds from existing reserves to pay the equipment out in full. Or option four, council uses 50% of the purchase price from reserves and the remaining 50% from a loan. A five-year loan with annual payments of $32,000, the interest charges would be approximately $29,000. So once council provides direction on a course of action, staff can then investigate the options and discuss with the bank any loan parameters to provide actual amounts. It's a great report. Yeah, very good. Um, uh, so, I like the idea of utilizing some of our, if not all of our reserves, I'm, I'm okay with some of it, reserves or deferred revenues or, no, not deferred revenues, yeah, deferred revenues, deferred revenues. Um, using that with the caveat that we'd be paying it back. So we invested our own money for every hour you're putting on the machines, you're basically having a, like, it'll come out of the operating budget back into that. It, I believe Nipson does something similar. So mm -hmm. So it just allows us to start that program to make sure that we have we're reinvesting back in so that to future equipment, to future equipment, future councils will not be looking at it and go on, well, thanks for leaving us nothing. At least there'll be something there, right? Right. <clears throat> I like that idea if we make sure there was still paying back with some interest. So maybe we're not the same as a bank loan. Yeah, interest, yeah, yeah, no, you, yeah. But you should recoup the interest. Interest payment what, going back in. What you would be making yeah. off those funds, yeah. we, we should be paying. Yeah. But what we're not going to be paying is the interest on the loan. So so even if we don't even if we don't pay ourselves interest, the fact that we're not like we're not paying interest to another bank. But yes, we're paying interest on the investments. I get it, yeah. but it's our like it, I get it, but it's our money that we're, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, because it's our money, we're not having to pay a bank an interest fee. Well, I guess what we need to ask ourselves is, is it uh, would we be making twenty nine thousand dollar dollars if over the five years if we took fifty percent out, so fifty percent of the cost out. So is that a better cost analysis? Like, what would we be making on that money uh, if we left it in? So, uh, we, so most of right yeah, now, yeah, not quite yeah. sixty thousand. So, so the kind of thing yeah. I was thinking is, so last year we brought in you know, what one hundred forty thousand from the Boston job, yeah. and then another hundred thousand this year. Like, if we remove that two hundred twenty thousand out of the landfill, there's still enough cost. We still have enough reserves to cover what we should have in reserves to for the landfill. Right, so the hundred thousand went into the yeah the landfill reserve from twenty two. So we essentially need to collect back on this equipment sixty four thousand dollars a year, to pay for it over five years. Mm -hmm. That three hundred twenty thousand dollars is sixty four thousand dollars a year for five years. So how we like I don't care how we cut that like that just makes sense to me. But the other piece of it is how much have we spent in um, 
maintenance. Mm -hmm. Last yeah. two years, yeah, yeah. ninety-six thousand. Right, right. Like we should be able to see that savings of yeah. operating bill, yeah. right? Yeah. Wait, do we? So you're saying we have two hundred thousand dollars in the landfill reserve? Just from well, what we brought in from an oil spills, right? From twenty twenty-two, yeah, there's a hundred thousand dollars that's in that budget. I mean, because the even though we're taking contaminated soil and it's still taking volume, right? So mm -hmm. it's, hopefully we can use it. Well, we can use it well, before it goes in. It, it will get used. Oh, we can't right. use that one ninety nine though. That's for to replace. Is that to replace the landfill? That yeah, the, there's, there's yeah, there's closure costs that we have to start. That's right. That's the eighteen thousand dollars that we keep putting. But that's separate here. from the yeah. money that we brought in. Yeah. in which is contaminants. But I so see that hundred thousand in twenty twenty two. Yeah, and a hundred thousand in twenty twenty four. No, so okay, that's what so I'm saying. Not, so sorry, Stan. The the land. Bill site tipping fee reserve fund is $199,393. What is that money earmarked for, that reserve fund? Is there one for closure costs? I don't know. Is there one for closure costs? Oh, okay. Yeah. But there should have been already money in there. I think there is. Though. Outside of those, oil, like drawn in those yeah. oil contaminated. Uh, tipping fees are filled. I know that's the 199. That's the 199. So, is this 199? Does that include your 18,000 a year? Yes, it does. Yeah. Um, so, that is closure cost, too. So, so, so it's not add up, the numbers don't add up then, right? So, let me check to see exactly what it came up. Money went into that. Okay. To that. Because, so like, if you're yeah, under your from 20 for two, you're the 100 dollars you brought in. Yeah. And this money's still in our revenue. So, so the hundred thousand from this year mm -hmm. is that reflected in that number there? No. Yet? No. No. So, oh, yeah. no. It, no. It's in revenue right now. Yeah. Well, we it's need it. And it's we need it because it's coming off of uh, here already yeah. to get us down to three hundred. And yeah. we brought right. a whole hundred. Right. Yeah, but I'm saying yeah. that if we wanted to lower that number more, we take the other hundred grand that was brought in in 2022. Right. But is that I'm asking? Is that part of that 199? It's part of the 1.6 for sure. It's in reserves somewhere in the 1.6. Okay, but there's nothing else under reserves. There's only a landfill site tipping fee reserve yeah. fund. And that's where Nikki was saying that the 18,000, that includes what we've put aside for Which the closure. Which means that 199 includes our closure costs. Yes, is what I'm saying. So if we take the 100 and leave 99,000, yeah. we're, we're ahead of what we should be for closure costs. No. No, because so uh, we're missing like a hundred thousand dollars. Our closure costs are more than hundred million. As we're trying to build up to the, I think we our goal for. I know three hundred twenty five thousand. Yeah, had in the presentation. Yeah. How much are we supposed? If you remove the, <laughs> what we're generating twenty twenty two, where is that money? Right. So it's. I want to say it's in the landfill. I want to double check before I'm confident telling you that. I do know it's in reserve. Okay, that's I all. Don't know what reserve? The only thing I'm really after is that hundred from. Yeah, it's in reserve from uh, 2022 and the hundred that Alex has just brought in. Mm -hmm. if we put that towards the equipment that we could mm -hmm. offset. The so we could finance never... ourselves basically. So you, it would just mean that we're only paying ourselves back 220 or 200. Right. And, yeah, 220 thousand dollars. Because right now we need 320, but we could take 100 out of reserve out of 1.6 right. and just not pay that back. Right. And then just pay, and just pay back the 220. Right. And then I don't know if that's probably closer to Robin. 200, I'm guessing, by the time. Okay. So, but if we pay <laughs> so we have an asset management plan strategic priorities reserve fund of $456,000. Okay. So there's money there that I Special. would think. Some of it could come out of that. We have a capital emergency reserve fund of $336,000. We also have an operating budget contingency reserve. That one only has $15,000. We have an operating budget account stabilization reserve of $98,000. And then we have a tax rate stabilization reserve of $98,000. Mm -hmm. So they're all in our reserve yeah. policy. And I present them that by yeah. right. what the goal of the targets yeah. are. Yes. And we're nowhere near where our targets are. Okay. Clearly. Yeah. I mean, but yeah. It's yeah. 
that's part of that July deadline and the July 2025 deadline. Yeah, right? Right. We yeah. need to yeah. start financing. We need a finance strategy on how we're going to finance all of these. But yeah. we can't stand still for 2024. No. And I mean, I feel like this gives us a start mm -hmm. on saving. If we could actually piecemeal this 300 and... Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, 320 from here and cobble together from the hundred thousand there. The full expectation that we're going to spend what I said, sixty four thousand dollars. We're just going to rebuild it anyways in the matter right. of five years. It's going right. to be yeah. back to where it was, yeah. right? Plus, and then that equipment will last longer in five years, and we keep paying ourselves right. to you know replace that piece of equipment down the road. Yeah. Well, like we stated too, that just fifty thousand we projected to come off. The, the initial operating budget yeah. to come back. Yes. Into, yeah. Right. We're, Plus all your contracted yeah. services. And as well, there's so. Good, so not only is there going to be a repayment uh, program with interest, there's going to be a huge maintenance program mm -hmm. that's on these two so that we're highly scrutinizing operational use and maintenance and wear and tear, right? Which I'm not sure how we got into that repair <laughs> <laughs> model, <laughs> that's, that's, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, your worship, here's my serious question. Do you think that we could put a cannabis slogan or something on a bacho and use the twenty two thousand forty seven thousand dollars? Like we're just putting yeah. on a bacho yeah. and don't, a green leaf. Yeah. Don't do drugs. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, I tell you, drugs drive, right? Don't put it over the windshield, like right. make, you, make you bossy. <laughs> yeah. It could be perfect. It would be don't do drugs and use heavy machinery, right? Like go. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think if we can put this together and finance it, and then we're not paying sixty thousand dollars in interest to someone. I agree. Else. I agree. I mean, I don't know what those numbers look like for you, but you, I mean, that's kind of where I would. Yeah, and we. Agree. I like to keep it the same as like as if it were a bank and pay ourselves back. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's like okay, maybe we don't want the six percent. Not that we would ever get a loan at six percent. We have better credit than that. Yeah, but it was just a number to start. Yeah, yeah. but. Yeah. <laughs> But even if we pay ourselves half that interest back, we're recouping the loss of not getting it on the interest, sure. and then we're still building right. it. So and yeah, okay, I we're just paying say, almost all of that in savings and repair bills. Well, for and yes. for longevity wise, right? Like I know in the past from reports I've read and stuff, like our contractor for brushing comes in and <clears throat> they get here when they get here right yeah like, right. there's no set time frame if we right. do only equipment like if we want to ditch like we did this year in january because yeah. it was nice weather yeah yeah we can ditch if yeah, we want to rush we can rush year round but that. the weather allowed us to right mm -hmm. so we tried to capitalize yeah. on on you the weather do it when you want to do it and you can do more also that twenty thousand dollars only gave you but just for argument's sakes five kilometers eight kilometers yeah. of brushing yeah now we can do also, yes. can we get a street sweeping and thing add on to it? Because that, that I never got, I never got a quote yeah. back. I think we were talking there just over $20,000. Yeah, but there's um, another seven. Spending but then we bring, we bring so, $7,000 back in here back in. to our sweeping yeah. tender. And we just get our staff members to do it. And you use that to pay, help pay off the... Yeah. It, I mean, I mean you know, and the way things are going, we can't afford to. The way things are going, you can't afford to have contractors anymore because no. there's so much money. Yeah. But the other benefit for us is that we're building up our staff team yeah. as well, right? We're making them marketable and uh, right. We don't want them marketable. Well, we do, but, <laughs> but you know what? We're we're adding value to our staff right. as well, right? We're job satisfaction. Oh. Job satisfaction. Yes. Like, and yeah. it's sense of pride. And yes. The yes. gone feels wonderful. We're putting yeah. back into the staff. Yeah. yeah. Yes. No one, we but should. Yeah. I would like to be assured, and I thought it out before, <clears throat> that the staff have the training to maintain that equipment and to operate that equipment because you need one, one is no good without the other. Yeah. And our major. The major complaints around here is the roads. Right. So if it's equipment that we need to do that instead of there, there's this is broken down, that's broken down. I would like to see that we do have equipment that's operational and long overdue, but I would like to make sure that 
the staff is willing to learn and to go out there and make give us the best roads because uh, all of that equipment is not good if nobody knows how to operate it. Right. No, and I I have spoke to a couple of the the equipment companies, and they said like upon the purchase of new equipment, they will send out um like their training officer to provide training on this specific piece of equipment to all the employees. And then from there, we can always do more in-house training like we've been trying to do and like we've planned to do with staff one-on-one um, -on -one or in a group setting, whatever. The, the nice part about that, and I agree with you, but Alex can run all this stuff and he knows, so he, he can do in-house training and he knows what he's looking for. I, and like another quick point, like um, I know like our current backhoe, I'm not saying it can't do it, but for say a piece of equipment like an excavator, um, that bad section that's on Sunnyside, right? It'd be nothing to tear that up and fix it, replace it, pack it, and then down down the road have like a contractor or somebody yeah. come in to just chip seal a small section, right? Yeah. It, it allows us, I think personally, it allows us to do more stuff yeah. in-house right without the big overhead cost associated to it with hiring a contractor this feels like a no-brainer to me i'm trying to figure out where the yeah the, well, where's, where's the other yeah, two right yeah. what about a float so and that's the next yeah. option i spoke to uh wayne busted knuckles mm -hmm. our mechanic um to purchase a new float to me doesn't make sense it's too expensive but there are used floats out there. Um, I know I've talked to other municipalities around that have a float who would be willing to maybe lend us one in the meantime if we need be. But I think purchasing our own float would probably come at a cost around, I want to say around $25,000 for a float that can be towed behind our current plow trucks. Mm -hmm. um, and that being said, we do have there are operators currently here with the license to tell. I thought they needed an A license for the float. They do. They do. Yeah. They need an AZ. Yeah. So we do have, uh, I think, one or two operators currently um, within Public Works that do have an AZ license. So and yeah, I mean, um, there's, I mean, we don't have to do the float this year. We can do it next year, but. I mean, we're not floating that much. But. And that's the other half, like uh, the like with that case, um, like it is still steel track, but it's got rubber pads on the track. It's not just a full like you're not going to destroy the road if you have to go down it. Um, same with doing like brushing and that sort of stuff, yeah. right? So, so so that would be primarily the landfill. So yeah, and then you would take it for for your ditching projects. You're like you're not tracking it from here to Pine Lake. Yeah. right yeah. like no you're not tracking it too far and so if we were to i assume there's some people around with floats and if you wanted to schedule a, i need a float on thursday and again on tuesday yeah, yeah. there's a, call, a little bit of a cost to it but i mean for the amount we're going to be floating around i mean for and i'm years, sure i'm sure between the two of us or everybody here right like you could find you could find a contractor Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know anyone, but so I'm not for that reason. Could you get one? Not, no. no. <laughs> um, <laughs> you don't want to drive? I do. Yeah. <laughs> I think what I'd like to see is, I mean, twenty five grand for a used one is still quite the investment. Is, and that's just ballpark. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But let's see how much we float it. Like float it as much as you need. So we already bought it. Obviously, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> like float as much as you need this year or whatever. Like to get the guys to do everything they need to do. And then let's do a cost analysis after that and be like, okay, if we're spending eight grand a year on floating, well then all of a sudden 25 grand, you saw the yeah. right? right. Okay. We're so, spending 500 bucks on floating. So for KPIs. Yeah, if, when um, you float, there's the insurance, but your insurance will go up to yeah, no. and that's and that's where we might have to do weigh the options between hiring a contractor to save a float fee of $500 or if right. we're going to eat the cost on both the float, the insurance, and and the liability that comes with hauling that kind of. Equipment. I think you just find somebody who'll float your equipment this year and 
Someone to float your boat. Put that on your okay. wish so list. Okay, so currently, can you give me what it costs per kilometer to brush? Like our staff don't brush, right? No, so, no, our, so our, they our, don't brush at all. Our staff do brush by hand, like intersections and roadside. Oh, they did. They brush <laughs> by hand. I guess. Yeah, like okay. with saws and stuff like okay, that. Okay, so but it's just so per it kilometer. Uh, I think the <laughs> last quote I had was one hundred and forty-five dollars. Um, right, okay. and then okay. and that would be the same for grading, because or like what else d would this equipment do? So we've got. So if I were looking for for brushing, because I want to attach a cost now per kilometer for brushing for grading. Right. For, so grade take grading out. Okay, of it. so that's so brushing, okay. ditching, ditching, dig outs, culvert replacement. Yes, that machine is a hundred and sixty dollars an hour if you get a contractor and you and do this work. Okay. So, so that's where, like I was saying, with the fuel costs and the operator, right? right you're thirteen hundred dollars and or one thousand three hundred eighty-five dollars for a forty-hour work week of that equipment. To contract so that out. one day is less. You're paying out more in one day than what that costs you all week. Right. And I and I'm quite certain right. our operators can no, get right. done a lot. That's like I think right. that was, yeah. not just do yeah. fifty kilometers a road. In your with yeah. your brush head, yeah, like that's I know with the guy fifty kilometers. Yeah, that's a lot. so okay, so I'm just saying because I feel like I I like this idea, so my vote is yes. Um, but for us to really um and for future councils, I think that we need to start collecting metrics and your paper um understanding that how much per kilometer uh you know are we saving so um. I like that idea, but in order to justify it, and again, open, clear, transparent, sure. uh, we need the numbers to back us up, which I think you've done a great job in providing uh, because we've contracted all of this out. So we have the contracted numbers and now we can have the, we have the, if we own the equipment with our staff doing it, we have that. Number. So yeah, like you do stuff per hour. Like yeah. Most yeah. Of that yeah. Brush, so when I say $165 an hour for that machine, that's just to, for digging. Like if we're digging, doing road, you put that brusher head on there, it's 200 bucks. Yeah, yeah. And like yeah. for ditching, I know in the past, like we used to subcontract out to a great hall, right? So the, the piece of equipment used to charge us $250 an hour plus another $50 an hour. So it was $300 an hour, yeah. which yeah. is painfully slow and great all. Yeah. Compared to the escalator, yes, yeah, yeah, six times. Faster. Well, I mean, and even with the the backhoe that you um your workers were doing this year, that, yeah, that was really good. No, yeah, and they, they, really good. they made like I will give it to the staff. The staff worked really hard. Yeah, they did a great no, they job did down a great, there. They did do um, a great job. But it was one of those things where we didn't think that we were going to be able to, mm -hmm. and the weather just allowed us to. And yeah, we capitalized yeah. No, on and the that was amazing. So. so no, I really like this idea. Amy, from us. Well, I'm hearing that we're good with the equipment purchase, um, but I'll put some numbers together for a report um, so we can talk about what that looks like and repaying ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, because I want that path in the form of motion that. Yes. Yeah. 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 Our repayment plan. Yeah. Well, and, so and you know, whatever your recommendation is, like if your recommendation is to fully fund it or, mm -hmm. right? So, what is the best um, of those options for us? Yeah. I like to think that the preserves. Me too. Me too. Me too. Why paying interest? Yeah. Like I agree. It. I agree. Well, I don't want to pay interest. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Why would it pay? Why that's it. Yeah. Pay we're going to have the money and we're not going to do any other capital. So the other piece on this, then the other capital that I'm hearing for um, 2024 is that we just want to do development road, just pulverize it. We'll ditch it, we'll brush it, it um, pulverize it, and then calcium and grade it. And, and like, it I that, know it might not be that like four kilometers or two cool. kilometers. I would in the meantime, yeah. but like in the long run, I personally believe it'll work out way better than well, it's better I than what we have now. I think right? we should do the four kilometers, then it's easier to grade, the longer stretch, and that that is the like one of the worst stretches, so we'll save money there. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're talking yeah. from like farmers yeah. or Mount Pleasant to uh yeah Mount Pleasant to yeah. wherever come farmers line I or think it was the McNutt. Actually, no. McNutt. 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 Yeah. McNutt farmer the same one yeah. one yeah the, that, the intersection then farmer yeah so we did four kilometers and then that means so we did four kilometers last year on development 
such are but there were no dig outs. Right. There's dig outs in those ones, and that was five hundred thousand dollars. Right. So we'll have in twenty twenty five we need to make sure we have five hundred thousand dollars to do development. Um so that's what we're saving the rest of the time. So I guess my only thing would be to Alex that he, you know, and him and and water. Wherever you think the digs are gonna be and I've already about. I've already had one meeting. Um I'm just waiting for his schedule to free up to come back because we got some snow in between then. Right. Um, but we've gone over quite a bit of what needs done. It's just more so now getting out, marking the areas. So we don't lose them when we pulverize. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And like properly mark them like with steak. Yeah, yeah. And that yeah. not just and then have a chain on, coming yeah. down and on paper. So if the stakes go missing and essentially chain it off. What, 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 what Antoine and I spoke about yeah. was yeah. using our CGIS markers to put it right into the program so that it's no matter what it's there, it's just it's GPS yeah. marking right? yeah. Perfect. Okay, so we'll work on getting some of those things then and then get a report back if that'll be our capital plan. And uh, sorry, I think you're cold. I guess I'm just focus on your arms. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, now I feel bad. Okay, so, um, when you write your report, like I would really like to be able to have somebody on the staff be able to put together a bit of a marketing material about the investments we're making this year. So, in the back of uh, in this equipment, why it makes sense, and that itself. We're going to pulverize development, and here's why. So this is what you can expect and why, like, a bit of the rationalization. Very, like, simply done. Yeah. And whether that turns into to a mail-out at some point, uh, update from the mayor, uh, whatever it might be. Yeah. Yeah, on behalf of mayor and council, here's... But yeah, just to put yeah. a bit of a media campaign together. Yeah, a, yeah. yeah. Campaign. Well, just to let them know what we're doing. Right. right. No, absolutely. Although I feel the yeah, they, uh, thing, like it, it's been yeah. quieter since our uh, town hall meeting. Yeah, so I think it's to get the information out. Sure. People know what we're doing, right? What we're trying to do. It's a solid game plan to mm -hmm. move forward. Like do the prep work this year, and then next year do the dig outs and move forward. Except I don't want you guys to forget we're not into the trunk bridge. We don't know what that's going to look like okay. yet. Yeah, no. no. Uh, you're that's right. Sorry. Yeah, so, and that's overdue. Okay. Our engineer is working on what's going to happen mm -hmm. um, and what are the options are. I know he and Alex are working on that. So if we end with the grid study, so if we spend this year kind of getting game plan figuring out what we need to do, we're still anywhere probably between like 250 and three, four hundred. Yeah. And, and, four, and well, just, does any of that equipment help our bridge? Right? So and this oh, this exactly. this will be the deciding factor essentially is if we get approved by the conservation authority to do one of two options um, for like either a box culvert, say, or a bridge, right? It depends what we're allowed to do. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, our our equipment could definitely help with that. Okay. Um, and is there a time that would be a contract that only uh, that you could work on that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah there would be a specific time. That there, and that's you that. And that's the other thing, like, I know, speaking to our engineer, um, depending on, because essentially, if you want to switch out, we were looking at an option of a box culvert, which is closed in at the bottom, but he mentioned that maybe it won't be approved because it is closed in the existing structures, open bottom, right? So we don't know all the ins and outs yet, but we're going through options. Yeah. Uh, sure. mm -hmm. Okay. So we will work on those reports when we get formal motions. Um, I know we were saying in here that uh, the council, the, the 25,000 I had in for council would be a nice mess uh, putting the septic here. So I'll have to leave that money in to get septic. Oh, the... Thanks. Yeah, I'm saying here. But so you're going to use the money from your chair? Yeah, yeah. Your chair. Yeah. How much for a portage on? Oh, the council park. She wanted to know. This is very good information, people. Yeah, yeah it's good. Good. So we'll kind of we'll talk of it, and then we'll have to bring it back to you guys, and then we'll rest.
solid three hour meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Please don't judge. Am I, uh, <laughs> I missing something on this motion? I didn't know if there'd be more motions that anybody wanted if you needed to make motions. This public works in committee meeting January 15th, 2023. What is that? Okay. Well, yeah. I don't know, but in like, well, Whatever today's or just date. Both, no, but we, yeah, we can just adjourn. Yeah. Yeah, just adjourn. We move by Neri, second by Jason. Let this meeting be adjourned at uh and and little six. Little six, all in favor. Neri. Yeah, we don't need that one. <laughs> <laughs>